gamers. How are you all doing today? We're going to be taking a look at Mythic Games Tournament for Super Fantasy Brawl. I'm Glory Hound. This Dr. is Glory Hog. And we also have... I'm so excited for this. I've spent so long staring <laughs> in a mirror preparing what I was going to say right now, which was that. I just said it. That was it? Yeah, that, that was, was it. I spent <laughs> hours. I spent hours prepping that. entry ever. <laughs> <laughs> excited was to be very here. This concise. Is be I like it, Jesse. I like it. Jesse from Quackalope. That was Absolutely. really good. I like it. I so, like that you included the screen of me in a swamp. Oh, well, it was it was really good because you were just there, and I was like, oh, this is some interesting background. <laughs> That's where you live, right? With the other ogres? Oh, Like in a swamp? Aww. As many ducks as I can find. That's my standard. Gotcha. <laughs> All of the ducks. And then we also have our lovely, lovely chat involved today as well. So we talk specifically with our chat and our audience. So if you guys are interested in talking back with us or commenting on what's happening in this tournament, go ahead and let us know. And we will pull up your comments. Let's see here. If you can dodge a mini, you can dodge an ice cream truck. Let's see here. Does this tournament have brackets or is it unfair tournament like Mortal Kombat? That would be fantastic. Would you just fight Gordo like right away? First thing you fight the four arm <laughs> guy. Like that's the first fight. That would be the best Mortal Kombat ever. Because if you can, you know, if you can fight a guy with four arms, you're pretty good like going throughout the rest. You're like, oh, you got lightning? It's way better than four arms. I like to win early. I like to win strong. Just one one tournament. As long as I win that one, I've I've got it, right? That's straight how this to works. the boss. I just think go so. straight to the boss. Who else do we have in chat today? We have Nathan and Battle Cry Petter. Hello, Alyssa or Alessandro. Hello, Big Baz. How are you all doing today? So it looks like the tournament has not started just yet. We're waiting for some players as we go along here. I'll go ahead and show you all. What else is going on? I, well, I just... and and just for the record, I believe this is a bracketed tournament. Uh, I yes. believe I believe they're doing it the fair way. But the video that we put up just this morning. <laughs> I destroyed my opponent. So if I believe I'm the ultimate victor of this entire thing. I think that qualifies, right? Yeah, no, that qualifies. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Absolutely, absolutely. I know I played Fantasy Brawl last night, and I yeah. completely destroyed the doctor. So oh, no. I mean, She complained the whole time. She's like, you always win this. This is so unfair. You're just going to win. And then she's like, oh, yeah, and I get three trophies, and I'm going to kill your guy in reaction, Warrior, and I win. Do I, do, I sense, do I sense a competition of champions going on? Is there, is there a little bit of like inner interplay between hosts right now? We're going to have to settle uh, this. Well, maybe. I guess it's just you two as the two rainy champions. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, my record is 5-1, but it's cool. It's cool. I guess you guys are the rainy hey, champions. Have that fun. one loss was enough. You're only as good as your last battle, so that's, that's, fine. that's fine. Well, that's it. That's it. You know, that was the one that you save face for is that last battle. You're like, oh, that's where I get bracketed up. That's how, that's what happens to you in what magic. Yes. <laughs> you're yeah. like, you do so well, and then you get to the one yeah. that counts, and you're like, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm and like, then... all I got to do is win one more match in the next three, and then I'll just lose three in a row. And I'm like, cool, that happens. So, all right, I'm out. I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it's going to go on Super Fantasy Brawl for our players I today. I do think that technically a hound would be a duck, though, just in general. What do you mean? Because like well, a, like a yeah. dog well, versus a duck, I just feel like. Thrown. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. I will claim the mini throne as my own. The mini throne. <gasps> Let's see here. What is, we also have got... I've also got the doctor game and watch with me today. What This is his name now. Dexter's obsessed with retro games these days. These days, I love retro games. Oh my goodness! Hello, Andrew. So, oh my goodness, we still don't looking look for. That. Don't look. Don't look at the brackets right now. We're putting brackets together right now. Oh my goodness, is our game in session? I'm getting excited. Hold on, hold on. I just can't wait to be like full commentator. Well, I know. Like, okay, that so, means I just get to talk about like flavor text the entire time, right? Is that why they brought me on? <laughs> That's exactly why they brought you <laughs> <Great>. on. <laughs> Going over all of the characters last night, do you have any favorites as far as which ones you like to play in general? Yeah, personally, uh, uh, Gwen, I think that's, or Gwen. Uh, yeah. I've got all the decks next to me right here. She, She's really her good. Ability, her ability to teleport and then attack from a long distance away, uh, I, I have such a good time pairing her up with some heavy hitters. So that's what I had playing on the video that went up last night. Uh, I had two really brawny uh, uh, brawlers, and then I had her popping around the map and just sniping people. Um, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. What about you all? I'm a big fan of her as well. Let's see, her last night, who was I playing with? I was playing with Marzuz, which is like the tiger. I love him. Yeah. Like, but with the sword. Yeah. 
for some reason, that character for me, like I go in just swinging and then like he always dies. He always dies yeah, multiple times throughout the round. He's not, he's, you, you get confident because you've got that nine health on him, but you forget the fact that he's uh, he, he's strong, but you're, he's going to be able to get hit without any shields. Yeah, absolutely. And those shields matter so much, so much during the game. A lot of times I will have a bunch of characters that don't have shields as I'm playing, and then I'll forget that another character has a shield as I'm going along, and I'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's four damage over there. And they're like, no. I'm, no. I'm interested to see what, what some actual uh, strategic skilled players do because my approach has been one of two things. Either go towards one tower and just claim it for myself for the entire round or immediately rush the other person's face and just try to like scratch them to death. Uh, <laughs> neither one. They both win about 50% of the time. So if I see some people copying my strategy, I'm going to be very proud. Just scratch him in the eyes, and you're fine. It's what I it's what I use in real life. It's what I use in game. What is it? Pause out, claws out, yeah, right? Just, <laughs> just calling at people. That's fair. I like uh, fair. I like battle cries post down here. Oh. One shall stand, one <laughs> shall fall. Let's see here. A hundred percent here for the lore dumps. Ooh, okay. the lore based on it. Do you, Dr. Glory Hogger, you're usually a big oh, fan is, of the lore. Is, yeah, just drop that on me. That's cool. Lore, go. Yeah, so what, do you, what do you have? Magic, ketchup magic and mustard magic. And those three magics combined. <laughs> basically no, the whole I world. don't. Okay. I don't think that's how that okay. works. No. I don't think that's how that No, 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 no. I've, I've actually got my teeth in this one, all right? So okay. when, it, when it comes to the lore and world of Super Fantasy Brawl, what you're actually doing is you have, you have mages and wizards who have gotten tired of the mundane existence of eternal life, right? And they've started going back in time, searching for uh, the, the best time periods and the best beasts and creatures and warriors from their day and age. They're teleporting them into this arena. They're fighting, placing bets, trying to add a little bit of spice to their, uh, to their existence, to the, you know, to the mundaneness of what's happening. And at, all the creatures in Super Fantasy Brawl are actually perfectly fine after the event. They're fully healed up by the wizards. They're sent back into their original time so they don't mess everything up. Because uh, when you start playing with teleportation from you know, other, uh, other regions in the past, you, you're risking a little bit along the way. Um, I mean, there's some like men in black mind wipe stuff going on too. There, so they just show, I think so they don't probably, go back and be like, I just fought a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there probably has to be, but yeah, so there's this big culture and study uh, in this, in this civilization where they are trying to find out who's the best for this match, what time period you take them from. And they're all searching through like the annals and records of history to, to discover uh, beasts and creatures that just no one's found before. Um, you know what would really happen, though, is like, so we've got this infinite energy, right? And we can do anything we want. So we decided to set up a Roman Coliseum style battles yep. for fun. I'd be like, house cat versus tiger. What happens? <laughs> you, know, just, you know, you just be pulling random things in all the no, time. No, no, not, not when you've got your fame and reputation. That's all they have left, these wizards. They've lived for way too long. All they have left is the reputation. So I they feel that, like on a personal best. level. So I've <laughs> definitely lived way too long. If they mind wipe them, like afterwards or when you come out of it you're like i feel like i was in danger <laughs> like, oh you're fine oh gosh like there's something dream. bad happened your heart's you pumping know, you know mythic mythic didn't uh, didn't tell me that this was a thing but i think they're really just setting up for the horn duck to make an appearance in the next kickstarter i, I think that's Ooh, gotta happen right that, i mean think about so it cool think about Is that it how you end up in so many games skull? you just you just insert yourself I, and then just hope they hear that. I do, I do. Like, I, I, tell, I tell lore stories and then get people to quack at them aggressively. And then sooner or later, they're like, <laughs> leave us alone. We'll put you in it. And I'm like, that works for me. I'll claim it. That's actually, I got her to marry me. I just quacked at her until she was like, all right, <laughs> fine. I accept. <laughs> does that work? It does work. You Sometimes. should try it. So you have to I find should the try right that out. So Jan, my co-host, he's going to be here next next weekend when uh, when we're doing this tournament again. Uh, Jan, my co-host, I'm just going to have to quack at him significantly more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how you get your partner. You that's just quack, you quack, 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 quack. I've got big dreams. I want I want a business partner and a life partner. And drive. You don't like no. quack at him to get him into the car and stuff. It's like, not just it's quack. not just the quacking. You have to also have the display as well. You have to like okay. do the. Okay. So you have to get Some like tail the feathers. Arm. Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's more goose, but I got we'll you. Talk, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk privately about this later. I mean, I really need to figure this out. <laughs> you bring him a pebble, and then he puts, and if it's the best pebble he's found, then you're good. 
I think in this way, you bring them a board game and then you quack at them. And if it's the best board game and it's a nice quack, then you're good. To There's go. something about taking an egg and balancing it on your feet over the cold winter months. And then like, I guess in summertime, then you get hitched. I don't know. So, so let me ask you a strategy question. Cause I, I've been going okay. through this. I've been doing some research and there's something that I realized I probably haven't been utilizing much. And I'm kind of curious to see how the actual players do. It has to come with planning uh, where you're actually able to, to top deck some cards from your hand. Do you guys utilize that very much? Cause I think it's an yes. essential part of the strategy that I really have not taken advantage of. Oh, I always use that. I, some characters are definitely much better at it than others. You're like kind of supporting characters are yep. really good about letting you plan a bunch. Um, I really enjoy it because I almost always throw a reaction in there. Like if I'm worried that she's going to try to push me out of one of the zones I need to stay in, I always try to plan and leave a reaction there. So I know I'll have that reaction in hand. So when she goes to push me, she just can't. Yeah. I want to, I, I want to see a lot of, uh, I want to see a lot of utilization of that. I'm, I'm excited to see how some people execute on, on strategies. Cause I, you know, like I said, for, for most of my gameplay so far, I've drawn up into my hand and just cycled through, you know, worked with the five cards that I've got. But there's a depth to the way that you can chain and start start pairing things together. I'm also curious to see, do you guys still pick pick your squad based off of how cool the characters look? Because yes. uh, I'm still I'm still there. I don't think our players today are gonna be are gonna be quite that uh quite that service level. So I found that there are some strategies in there that seem to work really well together. Like if you have a character that works really well with bloodied, then it seems like you can kind of pair that up, right? And so kind of get like some sure. synergy there. Yeah. But I do typically go like I think the first characters I picked was just like, I'll pick these three. Like the three that are just in this actual uh, game tray. And then, like, the second time, I was like, I'm going to pick the ones that look like they all have, like, a jungle thing going on. So I picked, like, <laughs> Cole and, like, Lorelai. And then I was like, and then Taze. He's a centaur. I'm sure he lives near a tree or something. I'm like, yeah, that makes like, sense. They all look like they live yeah. together in the same they, area. They, like they so. know each other. And I figured <laughs> they their could proximity be <laughs> to each other would, in, would make some type of, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja style, like, synergy. Like, by growing up together, <laughs> they would fight together as a team. <laughs> I, think, I think that's accurate somehow. Yeah, yeah, I think that's how that works. If you grow up near somebody, you'd actually be a better ninja with them than somebody who lives across town. That's that's like known. That's a known thing. It looks like Mark got the game but has not played it yet. Mark, you are missing out. Like it is yeah. such a fun game to get into, and it's so easy as far as like looking at the cards and knowing exactly kind of how to do everything. Like everything's really yep. nicely, nicely labeled on everything. So it's actually just a real gem to like get into and play and everything. It's not overly complicated, but there's a lot of strategy involved. So get it to your table. I'm so yeah. weird though, because there's a lot of characters here and I've only really played with maybe like seven or eight of them. Right. Okay. And I haven't even built a whole bunch of teams, but I'm already ready for the next wave. I'm like, what new characters are coming <laughs> out? I just sure. really enjoy these minis. And then the idea behind each of these characters, trying to think of like where they came from in time. Right. When you've got like this flaming Eagle and you've got this like Druid person who's got like this, Thorn, using thorns to make these like elementals and stuff. You're just like, man, where did they pull these people from? A lot of good I like, creativity. I like the uh, I like the the pirate themes and and barbarian themes that are kind of underneath. Like I want to I want to dive back and, and learn a little bit more about like the uh, like you're saying the civilizations and the cultures that they're ripping me and and what what the experience must be like to spawn into a stadium and uh, immediately go to battle. Oh, yeah, no, that would be crazy. Like, if we just spawn into a stadium, there's, like, what, maybe, like, a donut in the middle of the ring? You're Again, like, Grr. I'm going for the eyes. You put a donut in front of me, there's no, Is it? I'm not holding back. <laughs> Especially if it's morning. I mean, come on now. Yeah, I could see, I was going to say, I could, I, since I know you and in the morning stuff, if you just put a coffee out there and it was like, oh, yeah, no, stands, it's on. Gets that coffee, it's, it's on. a bite to the death. It's, absolutely. <laughs> You're going down. Like, no That's joke. <laughs> We're going to learn more about your relationship than uh, I think I anticipated. More than you're comfortable with. That's what we're doing here. You don't know what I'm comfortable with. Fair. Fair. Where do the centaurs come from? Oh, yeah. Trees. Hey, you know what, Fatal Paper Cut? That's where they come from. Centaurs come from trees. They're tree no, no, no. adjacent. I was going to say, you, you specifically said the they, at least stay, they at least stand next to it, one tree. Yeah. Have you never played World of Warcraft in the Barrens? They're right next to the tree areas where all the centaurs are. Oh, yeah. That's are. very true. That's come very on. true. That's this exactly is... where you go to find them when you go. You want one for battle. Yeah, like you go, There's a little pond, then there's like the palm trees, and then the centaurs are just running around out there, and you're like, all right, they're, they're tree adjacent. <laughs> I think whenever I'm picking characters, I always like the, that first time. It definitely was about the looks of it for me. But sure. that second time, I noticed that there are clearly support characters in here. Sure. Like, yeah. and pairing those support characters with characters that are going to be heavy hitters, and then 
more maneuverable characters is super, super key to your strategies going in. And so after that, I was like, ooh, I really love these because I'm such a like support character player where I want to go through and I want to have these characters that are pumping up other ones as I go through. She's a liar. No, I'm saying like, I like a mage. You go in and you're like, fireball, (laughs) fireball, fireball. (laughs) But you need the people to help supply the fireballs. And I'm down Mm. with that. So the people that you burn to gain the energy. So you're a necromancer, Mm. basically, of some sort. Well, that's fair. That's one aspect. of it. That's one way you can say that. There's no judgment here. (laughs) There should be some judgment. though. All right. There's a little bit of judgment here. A A tiny judgment. A little smidgen of judgment. <laughs> we approve everything except for burning people. Yeah, please, no sacrifices. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep that private. <laughs> I want to see, though, because you're talking about support characters in this, and I'll be honest, I haven't yet run a team that is predominantly support-based, and I'm wondering if that is something that they play test, if that's a if that's a feasible goal, because there's, there's so much about winning in this game that doesn't just have to do with hitting the other person over the head. Yeah. If you can move quicker, if you can be a little bit more agile, if you can get to the locations you need and hold those zones for, for one round, I think there's probably a pretty strong strategy around that. Oh. That's that's how I've always won before. Like Lorelai is very much a support character because she yep. does healing and she does plan. But then if you've got Taze, he's, he's, he can actually hit really hard, but he's mostly all about dashing all over the board. Yes. So between yes. those two, you can pretty much push people out of the way. You can plan to make sure you have the reactions. You can squat in the spots you need to. And then if you plan it right, as soon as those trophies move, you're like, boom, now I'm going to get two trophies. Yeah. Just for being near this pedestal. And that's, you know, or this statue. And I think that's definitely a huge part of it. Because just trying to beat people down is hard to do when they just come right back. Oh, absolutely. Axel, uh, convenient. Like, Axel they're on the ground, you give them a little kick. Axel popped in, le- left a comment saying, have a good game. Thank you so much. Excited to have you watching. Hopefully you enjoy the commentary. The game will be good. The commentary, subpar. Yeah. <laughs> It's the best that they can afford. They spent all the money on the game, not so much on us. That's fair. Well, <laughs> you know, that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I so, was talking about myself. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to be honest. Uh, uh and and Glory Hog, I'm sorry. I'm going to set you off of this one for a moment. Uh Cat Glory Hog, uh this whole show, like everything that's up and running, the stuff that you all do, I'm just the beneficiary of this. Like genuinely, uh if anyone's watching this, uh, head over and and support what uh what you you know what you do on on a daily or weekly basis because this is uh this is awesome. I never would have Aww. multiple screens. I just have me Aww. screaming into the screen and a few ducks. <laughs> That's about the extent of my skill. Yeah, it's mostly like little quacks and then you yelling angrily at the screen like an old man yelling at the clouds. Darn you! <laughs> Why do you exist, you fluffy little clown? That's yeah. what I can imagine people are going to be doing during the tournament. Like as soon as the play goes down or the end, you're like. Rah! Oh yeah, but you go, you scream into the screen. You know, it's not as like intense whenever you're in real life. That's what I've seen so far. The Snoob Dodge is going to win just because they are actually online, and that is okay. a key part of the strategy. Key is to part. be at the look, game. Look, yeah. showing up is is a core start. Ninety percent of it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it is. Mark, I'm only playing casual, so I'm curious to see the competitive play. I'm right there with you. Mm-hmm. We are also curious. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that we've, I mean, when did we get Super Fantasy Brawl? When it came off of the Kickstarter. So it's only been this year. So we've only been able to discover, I want to say, probably about two-thirds of the characters as we go through. So we haven't actually played with every single character yet. But yeah, I've none been... of the ugly characters. Let's get those <laughs> I, I, think, I think I'm probably, I think I'm between eight and ten games deep with about five other players. Uh, yeah. And the only game, I've had a blast with every single game except the one that I played against Jan, my co-host, and that's just because I beat him so thoroughly. Uh, I felt bad for oh. both of us during that experience. Wow. So, so Gosh, when, so when he's worst. here next week, just bring that up, that's please. So I'm just okay. like, we so we hear that you lose at Super Fantasy Raw all the time. How's that going like, for you? How did you get on here? Is it because you know Jesse? Because I know he whooped you really <laughs> bad in Super <laughs> Fantasy Raw, so you really don't have a place at this do you table. Need, do no. you need anything to apply to those burns that you have from Jesse whooping up on you? Yeah, I'm going to send him <laughs> Send in this leak. Thank you so much for the support. <laughs> Colin's in here with table one hype. I I 100 agree. Yes, I know, right? I'm like, I want to get, I want to see this happen. This like, show is honestly just a trick to see how long we all can be moderately entertaining. Well, just well, yeah, with, well, just like this, not looking so at this, anything. This failed attempt at quality entertainment was brought to you by Quackaloop and Gloryhound. <laughs> 
There you go. And this is how it always goes. So. That's fair. That's fair. I like to feel like this is what I bring to the table. It's just innate chatter for no you bring reason. In it, you bring in it all today, okay? Just all of what it. What is it? This is a silly place. Let's, let's not go there. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're referencing, but I approve. <laughs> Battle Cry is here really just to mock me. He's like my own all personal like, heckler. He just yeah. follows me around to mock yeah. me. Either either we're really good friends or he actually doesn't like me. It's one of those You're two only going to find out whenever you go to a convention and then you get a clap <laughs> or you just clap. <laughs> yeah. he, either, he either has a very, very you know stern conversation with you or you guys are best friends immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I like how her two. go-to is like, you're either going to get a quack or a slap. I have a feeling that's going to be your next segment. And should I quack or slap? <laughs> In this video okay. today, I want you to... No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no, you didn't go slow enough. For you. Yeah, Aww. it's not slow enough. You're right. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. Would, you, would you like to? Let's see. Mythic Games. Rocky start, but I think we're good to go now. Thanks Yay! for doing this, y'all. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Like, I want to yeah. see these traps laid down. I want to see our thing. characters... We're tossing in some jokes and stuff like that here, but the first round getting up and running, like props to these two for being the first people that are going to sit down on the stage. Uh, Absolutely. Excited to see this tournament run. Um, and uh, and it always takes a little bit to get TTS coordinated and up and running. Oh, so. yeah. And well, I would much rather do this, what we're doing, than have to be the no. first people to play live. And no, have I don't want to play live. Oh, yeah. gosh. Right? What yeah. I did last night, I just like, like, oh, I'll leave her in this yellow area. It's fine. And then she got like three trophies. And I was like, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. So Listen. I wouldn't want that to be live. The people like having that memory of like, oh, yeah, I remember when Dr. Gloryhog just messed I remember up. when Dr. Gloryhog basically gave trophies away. Yeah. <laughs> all, all I'm going to say is I won the game I put up. That's all I'm throwing out there. Smart. Mark. you know yeah so anthony i think we only saw the one table right now that's starting as far as the scheduling goes i'll have to take a look at the pairings and everything I can take a look if you'd like that. yeah go ahead and hold on here let's take a look you just take a closer look at <laughs> yeah Jesse. we'll take we'll take a quick look at the different tables and see if any others have started i know that they're going to be doing several games today so i would love to go through and be able to see multiple ones going on as yep. they're going on here <clears throat> Let's see. I've only played four games so far. Do and lost all of them, but I love it. Looking forward to seeing this tournament and how others play. I think that's the biggest thing is seeing how other people play because the game is so new and you don't have a meta. You don't have a full strategy on everything. You kind of have the characters that you love and have a good synergy together and that you're going to play for this tournament. I don't know if we have any like super, super competitors really coming Listen. in here just yet because of that. Listen, Big Baz, I've told you I gave you the, the best strategy from the very start. Go for the eyes. <laughs> Go for the eyes. Always. <laughs> we just retitle this stream. Go Yay! For the eyes. Okay, we should have some other games oh, up cool. and running. So we'll take a look here in just a few minutes. So let's see here. Did we go over our favorite characters? I have a, what, what's my favorite character? Oh yeah, my favorite character is Sulka. Yeah. Right here. Sulka. One, we are. super creepy. So first off, I'm just going for creep factor. If I can go ahead and make my opponent yeah. get super creeped out, that always helps. But I really like the shadiness of Sulka where she can go through objects. And I think that's really important to maneuverability in this game. Because we talked about the support characters and how important it is to be on those particular places that you need to be. And it's not necessarily about doing damage all the time because, you know, if you kill a character, you get one trophy, but being in the right place at the right time at the start of your turn is the yep. most important thing you can do in the game. And that makes it so strategic. I love it so, so much. Like, it is so exciting. All right, let's see here. All right, we got a game up. Who's playing here? So it looks like we have Galdar, we have Cole. Oh, I, I was talking about our contestants. And now for our contestants, who do we Tays have? back there. We got that orc with the giant sword. He always looks really cool. <laughs> we have Kadar and Captain Moro. I like Captain Moro's picture here. That's solid. That's a solid Topia picture. So it looks you like... got to lead with your strengths. <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> So it looks like they have Sulka and Nevermore, which is, that's a combination that you like to use. Oh yeah, Sulka and Nevermore are two fantastic kind of support characters because Nevermore does damage from a distance, basically. I really like his swoop move where you can swoop in, 
And if somebody has all their characters lined up, you can swoop through four different squares. So like you can swoop through several characters and not only injure them, but you're also fearing them. You're creating that chaos. And then you can have Sulka going in there and <clears throat> kind of picking out places that they want to be and stuff and adding support. And I really like that combination. And then you can have one super heavy hitter in there. I think so, one of them, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. So you're fine. Uh, one of my favorite say, combinations is that Sulka Nevermore and the Marsus because you have that heavy hitter that you just throw out there as like cannon fodder. Then you have these two other characters just doing all sorts of stuff on the board. So it looks like right now we have two control areas is what they're positioning mm -hmm. for. Control the, uh, uh, control the creation area and the manipulation area there. So if you pull back onto the map, we'll be able to get a sense of, of what they're trying to position and do at the moment. It looks like they're both kind of going after that creation area right now, or the blue area. And Andrew says, I have not played yet, and I'm wondering if I should get it or not. I have heard fantastic things, though, Andrew. It's super easy to get into. If Such you, an enjoyable play. If you, like, if you like fun, lightweight skirmish games that you can get to the table quickly, provide a lot of options when it comes to team builds, and aren't just about beating up your opponent, but are more about strategic positioning and movement, uh, with some head-to-head -head combat. Uh, I think it's a good one. I think it's a really good one. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks like from what I'm seeing over here, it looks like, so they've got Nevermore parked in the yellow area, but it looks like they are battling it out over the blue area. Oh, the team motto, aim low. <laughs> aim low. <laughs> Go for the legs, scratch out the eyes. That's how you do it. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. We should have some matchup information. Let me go check on that while you guys take a look at everything. Sure. Let's see what cards they're actually up to. Yeah, here. that's what I was that's what I was curious about. What uh what are the teams what are the teams that are built out and how are they uh how are they positioning themselves? So usually, usually when it's a little bit of control, I, I see the teams, they're kind of splitting off. Like you said, the, uh, the yeah. blue area is being, being a little bit dominated. There's not much focus on that yellow, which could leave a, an open spot for someone to get a trophy. But how I usually approach a situation where you've, got, where you've got territory control happening on multiple fronts is I'll have one person that I know can shove and push uh, over defending one of them, not really trying to claim it for themselves, but being ready to react when, they, uh, when your opponent sets down. And then I'll usually move in with a heavy hitter and then someone that's good at moving quickly and efficiently over into that other territory. Um, and so my, my assumption would be that's, that's a little bit of what they're uh, doing head to head over in that, uh, in that blue zone at the moment. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's always nice that if you do have a character, you're not really utilizing immediately in the match just to kind of park them in another area. So when it does come up, you've already got somebody there ready to control like they have with Nevermore here in this yellow area where, if they're not careful, they'll just win it with just one character. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then, like, you just feel bad. If you have somebody win something with one character, you're like, mm, why am I so bad at this? But sometimes you don't have the time or the, the right cards to make your way across the, <laughs> across the board in just one turn and push somebody. It does take time. And I think the really interesting aspect of this is that you have to set up to win your trophy, and then your opponent has their whole turn to basically disrupt your plans. So yeah. here at our table, too, we have... Captain Morrow, who is actually Daniel Edvison, and for Kadar, it's Pleric, and I apologize, you have a very interesting name, Damon Oaks, I think, I'm not for sure on that, but we do have Petrick and Daniel here today, and no fatal, we are just commenting, we're not actually playing today, it's Actually, We're too nice. Strong. We're just too well, good. It's That's actually it's actually nice not playing, <laughs> as opposed to like playing and commenting at the same time. Because if I was actually playing this game she and trying lose. to comment, yeah. yeah, well, one, yeah, I would lose because I'm trying to comment with everybody. <laughs> but two, I would be so focused on what I was doing, I wouldn't be able to comment the same way. So listen, Glory, <laughs> definitely not playing. <laughs> I'm just throwing this out there. I'm totally not opposed at the end of week three when this tournament's wrapping up. <gasps> Whoever's claiming their trophy, maybe the commentators need to do a little bit of head to head. See who see who uh, who can dominate the board state. See what we've learned. I would be down for that. I'd be down from for what like I've learned. I need final. to fight Jan. That's what I've learned. <laughs> <What's it? laughs> so we'll go. We'll go. We'll go. Hound versus the duck, right? And then we'll do 
the side characters. You the know, side versus the goose. Character. Go. I gotta there be honest go. though, I'd be significantly more scared of a goose. <laughs> Gooses are mean. Why yeah, are they? they are. Why are they so mean? It's because their necks are so long. Is that yeah. it? The mm-hmm. longer your neck. Well, what about giraffes then? Oh, they're super mean. <laughs> they're su- I don't mess think around so. with the giraffes. You see any giraffes in America? No, because they're mean. We kick them out. Mm. Uh, Dr. Glorhog, your reputation precedes you. That's true. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that <is. laughs> Let's see here. And that is action you can only see here on ESPN 8, the Ocho. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what was it the other day I saw? I saw somebody broadcast. It was like, it wasn't Halo, but it was one of those esports and they were broadcasting, but it was like ESPN 32 or something. I was like, this is so cool. Finally, something I'd watch on ESPN, but it was like on ESPN. 32, we need we so. need this on ESPN 46. I mean, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. this is what mm-hmm. we need up here. Number 46. I'm just waiting for someone to... <laughs> number 46 specific, specifically, or maybe 42. 42 is a good number too. Maybe maybe the ESPN parents actually 42. Tell us, the parents don't actually tell us what characters they're playing on as do they? Yeah, we're no, they don't. To, uh, we're gonna have to be checking their boards to to see what the team yeah. makeup is because the the bases are just white with the uh, the the mod here. You want this? Yeah, here, let me see this here. Hands free. She's taking over. There we go. Okay, so. She's going to do double mouse. She's going to use a mouse for one and a mouse for the other one. It's going to be <laughs> amazing. Mice. All the mice. I have all the mice here. Well, they're not playing as those characters because those characters are still back. Still back? Yeah. Okay. Let's try to see. And this does add a whole different, like, here. kind of wrinkle to it with it being tabletop sim right or by tabletopia i'm sorry tabletopia. is that yeah you have to kind of like maneuver around oh there you go you found it pretty easily so one team is the nevermore galdar and cole so cole is really good too she's got like different like lizard lick abilities i don't yep. know how else to say that but it, they actually help her maneuver around and actually move other players pretty easily and galdar's a very very interesting character as well i mean he's one of those pirates that i was referencing earlier Okay. He's gonna he's gonna have a lot of actions that move him across the board and do some heavy damage if he's able to get in your face. Um, okay, I, I kind of see him as a bruiser most of the time. Doesn't he have like a harpoon action or something he where does. he can like pull? He can he can totally like fish a hook out and then rope you back in. So if you're a ranged character, uh, depending on where you're positioned, you could be a little bit more vulnerable to him. So essentially, what he's doing is that move in the club <laughs> where you go like this, you throw it out, and then you oh reel sir, him in. Yeah. I've never been to a club. <laughs> What? Oh, is what? it because you're too young? Oh. <laughs> they don't let me into clubs yet, or is it because you got that cool Kentucky haircut that you got done? Uh, they don't let no, you into I got, the club I now? got that. I got that haircut oh. done in Alabama. Yeah, was in mistake. Alabama, and then it was a mistake. Oh no! <laughs> Look, you should not. You should not. I'm just gonna say this: you should not go to a great clubs in Alabama to get yourself cleaned up. It's because uh, they were like, because didn't you tell me you want a little bit off the sides, so and they just shaved just, like the sides. Just of your head? a touch off the sides, and we're uh, you know we're still <laughs> the, uh still working on it. We shaved off. I think we're it just was, sticking to it. It was pretty great. I think that should be your new style now. They're probably so proud of themselves, too. They're probably like, that guy has so much you know, hair, and just we just took care of that. <laughs> listen, here's the worst part. I also got a shampoo done because I, I was on the road for a little while traveling, and uh, I don't know. I've never had a shampoo done at a, at a hair salon before, and you guys can tell me if, if I'm wrong on this, but are they supposed to use the coldest water possible? <laughs> No, no. So, the one I go to always does it, but they always use like really warm water, and they put like that yeah, hot towel on that your face sounds, and stuff. That sounds lovely. Yeah, it's supposed to be a relaxing experience. Then they like massage huh. your scalp, and they're like, "Would you like a soda?" And I'm like, "I'll take a uh, Dr Pepper." No, oh. see, I I got I got my hair I got my hair buzzed, and then I got like drenched in ice water for a solid mm-hmm. sixty to ninety seconds, and that was about that was the experience. I'll tell you the worst haircut I ever got is when I first joined the military and I didn't realize that you had to have your head shaved. So I was like, yeah, just get it short. Like I think like a high and tight and they're like, cool. And they literally just have a vacuum hose attached to buzz cutters and they just, and they're like, all right, you're done. And you're like, cool, cool, cool. That's not what I asked for. And then you have to pay them. So, so it looks Corvac, like here. Corvash and Tays are getting getting a significant amount of damage on them pretty early on. Corvash is going to be in a, in a pretty bad position here, honestly. Um, piling up, piling up, already bloodied because uh, he's just getting over that four position. And I'm not sure, but I, I believe does Goldar and, and some of those others have abilities that trigger when when characters are bloodied. Um, I don't think Goldar does. I know. I don't think Sulka does either, as far as like bloodied yeah. on that. Yeah. 
And that's focus. And I know Taze does. And Taze doesn't have bloody. Taze is all about dashing all over the place. Yep. He's that's, like yep. a dash prince. That's not super great, though. That's not. That's not good. But the one advantage is that sometimes it's worth sacrificing your characters if you can still control an area, no, which is more important. Absolutely. Well, just we already have so getting those trophies. We already have. So, so this team over here uh, already has two trophies secured. What's what's the position of the other team there? It looks like only one potentially. Yeah, because they're sitting only, all over that. Only a single trophy. So it looks like potentially he's put himself a little bit more vulnerable to uh, to damage, but um, secured some victory points in the process, which could be the difference. It right. makes a huge difference. It's not about necessarily how many people that you have down or how much damage you have on there. It is those trophies and making sure that you get those. You know, you get your five trophies so you can win. Like, it's a... It's tough because you don't have to beat the other people necessarily. You just have to make sure you're in the right place at the right time. That's what's Let's important, see. you know. What's that newest condition that just popped out here? We've got we've got control the uh, uh, control, control control the, the enemy deployment room. area. Deployment Which area. That, that is, is interesting. That is a hard one I find to secure. I usually plan to try to get that when someone's left their gate vulnerable. Um, yeah. If I'm able to just kind of sneak behind them and get it without people paying attention. Yeah, I find the only way you can really do that is if you have somebody that can move really fast, like a tase or somebody like that. Yep. And then you can just try to like work that person over there and basically try to camp out that spot. But then you don't want to kill the, your opponent because then your opponent's going to end up right back at their well, gate and they're going to pop right out. I'll tell you the perfect one for that. If we, if we had Gwen here on the table, uh, this card right here, a jump four, can position mm. yourself almost anywhere on the map. Uh, that is enough. Once people are trying to secure a gate, like right now, that red zone is where they're paying attention to. That is enough to pop behind and just and just you know do uh, like close down that victory um, right right towards the middle to secure two two trophies at the same time. Nevermore is on the map though. Nevermore has a big swoop for like that too. Nice, very nice. Which essentially does the same thing. Plus, does damage a lot of times when you swoop through people. Or I'm sorry, it doesn't do damage, but causes fear, which makes them move. Makes them run away. Yeah, we'll run away from you. So, let's hear. Hello, Mr. Gaviola. He says, hi, friends. Quack. Oh, Ruel. Nice Ooh. to see you, sir. Table three, Von Ravica win 5-0. Oh, my gosh. Holy I didn't even cow. see table three pop up. Yeah, no kidding. That was super fast. Fabrice, congrats on that. Like, It'll oh be my interesting gosh. to see like some of these people if they just continue to dominate as they go up the brackets, right? Absolutely. Put, I mean, put that one on your radar. Either really effective strategy or the best card draw possible for the team they built out. Um, I'm I'm yeah. going to lean towards strategy. You don't do five zero without uh, without executing some some pretty disgusting. Moves. Probably probably played some games. Probably played a couple of games. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Seventy six. <laughs> Definitely, definitely yeah. at least 76 games or above on that. <laughs> Do we want to take a look at another table? If we go back to our other table there and see, yeah, let's pop see what they're see. doing. Yeah. I have the pairings, but I do not have exactly all of their starting times. So I'm not sure who mm. we're going to find here. So I'm seeing the two games that are up right now. So I'm seeing the one we were on originally is still up. Well, let's go back to the ones the ones that we were on originally with Colin and Jason on it. I want to see if they're up and running and that they're they're doing any better. If uh, not, we'll pop back to table yeah, two. If one of them ends up table being three offline. went so fast. I can't believe that went so fast on table three. Like I didn't even get a chance to go over there and look, Fabrice. <laughs> like you got to slow it down a little bit, okay? <laughs> we got to be able to check it out. <laughs> with, with such an epic win, you need I to make sure. If, if, they're, if they're paying attention, let us know what the team that won 5-0 was. What was that makeup? What was that build for uh, for that victory there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Pro no progress made, sadly. Oh, yeah, it doesn't so look sad, like. Colin. Yeah, it doesn't look like the first table has gone. It, it looks like they're having connectivity issues where yeah, one I think is so. on and the other yeah. one's on and stuff like that. Which that can happen. They might have to end up just calling that one due to due to issues, or maybe computers. doing it later or something. All right, let's head on back over to the other table then. Yeah, I think that would be really awesome. I hope Fabrice is still on so they can go ahead and give us a little bit of commentary on that. On exactly yeah, let what, us let what us know they, what happened and what you built. What happened there? Right. Right. That would be fantastic. 
Yeah, tell us that winning team for real. <laughs> Not that I'll use wanna, that next time. I want to sit here and stare at the card so I understand what exactly could have could have went together. Well, basically, what we're doing is we're getting our own pro tips now. So, like, as soon as we start talking to everybody and we start getting all the filtered down information of Table what flip characters, final move. Yeah, what characters are doing really well, like. <laughs> That's going to be my lineup for next time with Dr. Glory Ha. Huh? So if I use this creation and destruction spell at the same time, it looks like I could just flip the table and I win all five trophies. <laughs> Weird. Reasonable. Works better in person, though, honestly. Yeah. Oh, definitely. It's much more dramatic in person. Absolutely. You get more eyes to your table with that one, you know? Like, nobody's you know, missing it. I'm so excited to... Uh, Tabletopia is an awesome platform. I'm excited that the tournament tournament's starting to get up and running now. Uh, but when we're able to like see people carry in their crates yeah. of painted miniatures and set them down, uh, uh, that's yes. going to be such a cool experience. <sighs> yes, I cannot wait for that, and I cannot. Have you all started painting any miniatures. of them yet? No. Okay. Sadly, we never have a bunch of time to paint a bunch of I miniatures. Do I. We always have like half painted miniatures with everything, uh -huh. and eventually, if we really love a set like this, we end up asking somebody like, "Can you just?" on the DL painter miniatures yeah. and so, we'll so let, if there's any we'll let everybody out know there, it's you. <laughs> yeah. Glory Hound and I are both willing to ship off our core boxes. If there's any painters out there that want to do a, uh, do a treatment. Absolutely. There we go. All and right. It is a whole different, that's a whole different skill set. Just painting them. I could, oh my goodness. Typically I'm like, Oh, it's just trying to fit in another game. So I don't have time to try to paint something well, usually. You all have some of the models right there in front of you, I believe. These these are pretty friendly models to paint with big yeah. clean surfaces. So I, you know, I don't know that it would take too long to make them look good. Um, no, I don't think so. I think oh yeah, you could do a real basic. Even just a wash on them would make them yeah. look a little bit highlight some of the cool parts about them. For yeah, sure. Yeah, when you have a big fantastic mini like that and so defined and everything, it becomes so much easier to paint. But the painting these miniatures like has just changed over the years. <laughs> Everybody's doing such amazing Unset, detail on Unset. things. We need to I use know. Project X for, for I know scale who that so is. people know how big these minis are. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, Project Hi. X, Project X has given me some bad evenings. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> project X is, we, so we've ran have through Rightbusters three times no. live. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Project X smashed our whole team. Like he smashed like three of our Rightbusters in like one turn, it seemed like. It's brutal. The, brutal. The very first time, the very first time Jan and I played, we did a tutorial, and then we were like, you know what? Let's swing into Project X. We can handle this. We're gamers. <laughs> we did really well up until the door broke open. Yeah. And then he just starts <laughs> yes. running through walls like a like a really angry Kool-Aid man. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh no. <laughs> the worst, the worst version of Kool-Aid Man ever. The worst version. <laughs> so let's see yeah. what's happening on the board here. How has this terrain changed? You can tell they're positioning for that red zone. Definitely, and they're going through some traps. You know, willing like, to step on some traps in order to yep. uh, get into that and get into that area and keep the Which, opponent from uh, securing it. I mean, what's the worst trap? Is like if you get like three damage. I think is the I worst trap. I think three damage is going to be your heaviest hit. Some of those other uh, stuns can be bad, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a stun can be bad. Usually it's a root, I find. So a lot of times I'll run right into a trap because I'm going to be stopping there anyway to try to hurt my opponent. Three ta damage, though, is so detrimental, though, especially like in a mid-game where you might be losing characters and stuff like that is happening. Like Just a flesh wound. I'm not all about stepping on traps for no reason, okay? I go around those things like a normal person. If, you, right? play, if you play Darren, though, she's all about the traps. She gets bonuses <laughs> for being on trap spots. So, of course, she doesn't... Once Bonuses she's for being up, on, and, and I on believe them. can trigger traps from a little bit farther away, right? Really, really make you vulnerable if you're on a trap location. Yes, and another cool thing about her too is if she once you kill somebody with her, which is pretty easy to do, because she's got some really heavy attacks sure. with her crossbow and stuff, is then you can just sit on a trap and you get armor from being on a trap, and you don't trigger it. Nice. So we have a comment here from Rune Claw that says, "Use the contrast paints from Games Workshop, and you'll get a very good result without too much work." And after that, as you get better skills or free time, you can at least slowly add it to it and make it cooler, hmm. which that's a really good idea. I didn't even think about just putting the contrast, like the little ink on it and stuff like that. Just inking them would define those features and really make them pop and stuff. Have you ever done that, Jesse? I've done I've done it with a few things when I wanted like to a little get ink wash. A I had I had some games that were really mini focused that I wanted to get to the table fairly quickly, and so I did a a quick airbrush airbrush base, and then just a just a ink wash and spray over top. 
Um, yeah. just enough to give them texture, right? Turn it from, turn it from that gray plastic into something that's already base primed and looking good on the table. Ooh, somebody went off the board. Somebody okay, just so got just, roasted. Uh, we, yeah, we <laughs> just had Coel and Coel get knocked out. Yeah. Which at least, at least that character is fast. So if you get them back on the board, they can get back into the fight pretty quickly. Pretty fast, lot, yeah. not too far. A lot of jumps happening with the deck. I'm looking through this right now. Uh, yeah. A ton of jumps, some good opportunities to draw cards and plan cards as well. A real support character. When we're talking about some people that can be strong support characters, Coel's going to get into position, but then also be able to really supplement the rest of your deck. I, I find that I use that character the most, really, even if you're knocked out, is you just step back in, you do your jump, and then you push somebody out of the zone. And so then all mm. of a sudden now you have control of that zone. What is that, going on over here? Yeah. So much damage, but none of them have been knocked out. Hanging on by a thread with all the characters. <laughs> That's impressive. I wonder if they went for just like really high damage, but no, not high damage characters, but uh, characters with lots of, lots of health points. Because we have nine, sure. eight, and seven yeah. health on each sure. of those. So well, a lot of them don't have, like none of them have any shields at all. So right. just like any damage they get, they're just taking it. But well, I'm wondering if that was Taze the strategy. and Corvash are both going to be pretty heavy hitters as well. So really getting into the other person's face and just sticking, like sticking your foot where you want to be and not moving. Yeah, um, and then yeah. someone can do all that mind magic from like really far away too. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Salem, sorry, we don't have any commentary in French or anything. And, and apologies, it's only only our commentary here today, though. But hopefully, in the future, they'll be able to translate it uh, via subtitles or something like that. That would be I fantastic. Really feel bad for anybody that has to translate anything that I've said into another <laughs> language. <laughs> I'm apologizing. Oh, no. ahead of time. They'll skip over. It doesn't you, don't translate. Worry. It doesn't there translate. Is what it is. There you go. <laughs> This is the German Kool-Aid so man right here. Just, oh, just, yeah. They'll just be like, mumble, 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 Dr. Goyhog, mumble, mumble. There you go. It's good. <laughs> so, so we've got three trophies here on the side with a lot of damage. What's what's the opportunity here for uh, for a quick victory? It's only one trophy on the opposite side. Um, if, they, if they're if they able to hold area. down that red area, yeah. this may close out the game. So really, I, I think I think our theory of putting them putting themselves in a vulnerable position just to make sure they can secure those points uh, yeah. It's a totally viable strategy. Absolutely, Definitely. absolutely. It's not about taking people off the board. I mean, that's helpful sometimes. The, it's always but good to get a, a quick trophy from just knocking somebody there. out. But yep. right. right, the danger is going to be losing control of that of that area because you have so much damage already piled up on you. Yes. If someone's able to shift you out uh, or get get an attack and you haven't planned appropriately, um, you may be in a in a pretty vulnerable position. Ooh, what do we have going on here? Someone did someone just get removed again? I think so. Oh, try to scoot on over. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's going to be—is that going to be a fourth trophy? That is going to be a fourth trophy. Are we taking just one character off? What's happening? Oh my gosh! Well, that person's just resetting. They're resetting theirs. Yeah. It's getting ready. So they okay. just ended their turn. Let me go over to the other one. And we still got all their characters hanging on here. Yeah. I'm like riveted. Of it. I'm like, who's who's dying? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I mean, they can only take two more hits on Sloka and then they're done. <gasps> Taze should be fine though. Taze is pretty good. And Taze has reactions that give armor too. So just by having Taze in their lineup, there's gonna be yep. some reaction cards that can give somebody like a plus one armor and let them dash, I believe. Yeah. With That's everybody really being also in the middle, if you have a fast character that can get across the board in a couple turns, it would almost be worth it just to throw that character out because in a few rounds here, those being in the other character's zone is going to be a huge trophy goal in the next so we few had, rounds here. We had another card flip out here. Uh, what mm -hmm. is this? What is this new trophy that's coming out now? Okay. Take a look at the trophies. So we've got the red area, we've got control yep. enemy deployment, and then have a champion in each deployment area. Okay. That's another complicated one. I find those I found those to be some of the most uh, uh, time like the most important when it comes to timing. They're yes. so challenging too, because yeah. usually the other the player Yeah, you exactly. And then the, sometimes the other player is already kind of close to their area, or if you take somebody out, like it, it immediately impedes what you're doing, because then they can just throw their character out back into their area. Yeah. And then you have another battle going on. So like they, those are super, super hard to go ahead and do. Like, 
I mean, myself, I usually ignore them and move on to yeah. other things. <laughs> I mean, I'm not very good at those ones. I'm kind of a fan of them, though, because sometimes you can trick your opponent into, like, basically bait them to kill your character, and then you just respawn right over that the there, and you're like, ah, now I'm and here. And then you're I'm like, back. ha sucker. And they can work really well together, too, because if you spend, if you move all your characters into their into the enemy's control zone, and then they kill one of your characters, and now all of a sudden you're split, you're in both, and sure. you're ready to get that next trophy on the very next turn. And if you're always putting your, it's like playing chess, right? If you're always have your opponent in the position where they have to do something or you win, that's a good spot to be in. Because eventually they just won't have the right cards or they'll like just not take the right action. Okay, setting someone's, someone's setting a, uh, a trap there right in front of, I believe that's Goldar there that's <laughs> right? hanging in the back. Just saying, just saying, you don't need to come this direction. You know what? Do you think if Goldar's going to just... try to drag them through that trap, though? Because he can't pull oh, them well, towards him. Yeah. Well, Soka, is Goldar and Soka on the same team here? Yeah, I want to say no. No, because Soka's No, they're the not. Team. They're not. Yeah. So Soka could be in a vulnerable position there if Goldar has the uh, the card that they need. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, they're moving. Oh my goodness. You should help them out by helping them move their characters. No, I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them to the tournament. Just start moving their characters Just start here. I'll them. fix this for you. I've got this. No, it's in spectator. I don't think I can do that. That's probably for the best. <laughs> I mean, you don't know till you start trying. Well, there you go. I just start clicking on things. They're like, we know, we know. <laughs> start doing like a little hand circle, like do this action. Whoa, okay, so Anthony is on here. Let's see here. Table six here was also a 5 0 score. Holy cow. Oh my goodness. Congratulations, Shinny. I am so sorry for the people who you were playing against. That is <laughs> that is a that is a rough battle. No kidding. All right, I'm gonna go over. Anthony, and... do you have uh if you have the lineup, if you can tell us what characters were playing during that uh during that showdown and if there was any cool things that happened, let us know. Mm -hmm. So that was Nicholas Dementley and against Jano San Jose, and that was Nicholas's win. So congratulations, Nicholas, on that. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Do you want to? You know, you know what this is indicating to me that we've had we've had two pretty pretty sure secure victories that have happened already uh, quickly yeah. in this tournament. One of the things that it's pointing out to me is that is that there is a degree of of skill and experience you can get in this game that gives you a, a notable advantage. Um, you know, I, I I have to think that you know it was it was a little bit more you know strategic planning, picking your picking your team. That draft is so important, uh, and we were joking about how we just sit down and we do a non competitive whoever looks the coolest yeah. draft. Uh, <laughs> but I think in a tournament scene like this, understanding your characters and and how you might play against each other and responding to your opponent opponent correctly um, is probably going to be where they started with a little bit of an advantage. It looks like we got a win on this one here. They made it in the red area there. Yeah, they and... held down. Yep. They held it down. They didn't, and no one got wiped out. I was expecting to potentially mm -hmm. see someone get knocked out on this. Um, good for them. So this is going to be a five to one. Absolutely. And that was Kadir Petrick. Which Congratulations. That's, yeah, that's pretty crazy to me because I think the worst loss I've had, well, the only loss I had was against you, but I lost by like two trophies. And usually our games are it's four to five. usually very close. Like, Within two that. trophies, yeah. right? Like, you know, you're like, oh, it's four to five or oh, it's four no. to six because you triggered a double trophy situation. But that's it. This um, is a different This is a different scene, though. This is a different level of play. I think yeah, you've, got that, you've got that lightweight. Good. Yeah, you've got that lightweight, family friendly. You know, sit down and go head to head. You'll probably keep it pretty balanced because you both don't know too much about it. This is yeah. clearly showing that that strategy can can take a major turn. We're seeing yeah. such splits right now in the early games. I mean, uh, I think that's awesome. You yeah, want to refresh that and see? Sorry, looking for tables right now. So. Wow, there's been some huge blowouts on this. Like, I just want to know what characters they played with so I can also blow people out of the water. <laughs> I'm that player. I'll go on the internet and I'll be like, who does really you'll, well? Instead of, instead of deck building or drafting, you'll, you'll be the, you're the one that's just who Googling under the table. Really well? I mean, I'll pick the characters that I really like playing yeah, with, but I'll sure. pick the best of those characters that I like. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Because it just makes things so much stronger. And I think that you're going to see a lot of characters coming out of here that you're like, all right, these are going to be the top characters to play. And then that's when we'll get new characters. 
I'll change think, things up. <laughs> I think that's how it'll be. In this first tournament, we'll probably see some some we'll probably see some characters that come out, like you said, that are taking a an outstanding lead. Most teams are built with them to some degree or or have a good balance and response. But uh I think that's when you have an opportunity to see some other strategies kind of open up. Yeah. That's fantastic. Like Oh my goodness, this has been crazy already. So I'm trying to see how many tables they have up. They have quite a few tables and then they're going to go, we're going to do three different rounds of brackets. So there's going to be like this where we're getting everybody together. Then there's going to be like semifinals and then there's going to be finals brackets. So make sure if you all out there are new to any channels or anything like that, that you all like and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, make sure to ring the bell and everything so that you can get notified whenever Mythic Games goes live yeah. because you'll want to stay tuned for what's happening with all of those competitions and everything. So make sure to go ahead and do that because this is not a one-off event. This is yeah. three three weekends worth of events, okay? Oh, we have information coming in here. Chini was using Maru's. Gwen and Wrath. Ooh, okay. I like all those characters. Okay, Maru's, I like all those characters. I've got characters. them right here. Maru's, Gwen, and Wrath. I'll go ahead and hold up these Mar cards so we can Maru's see. Maru's is really good and does extra damage when bloodied. Wrath can pop around because that's your rogue character. So he can, like, tunnel and then pop up and, like, claw people. Yeah, Wrath. And then Gwen is going to be the character that I said is, is probably my favorite to play with at the moment. Uh, she's yeah. going to have a lot of long range and quick movement. So we're seeing a... We're seeing a pattern here with Maru's uh, Wrath and Gwen. All of them have a significant amount of movement, it sounds like. Yes. No, so this definitely. is going to all... be a, a low hit point, uh, no shield team with a ton of gameplay when it comes to the board state itself. And those are actually two really heavy hitters, I know for sure. I know that Gwen and Maru's are both two people that go in there and they just go in like guns blazing. You know, Gwen has those spells. You know, and like with this, they're heavy hitting spells and you can do it at a distance. And then Maroots can go in there and is a heavy hitter at a very short distance. So that's a good combination right there. Oh, definitely. I'm really intrigued with the fact that there is really no, there's no high hit point bruiser in this team. Um, yeah, no, they're all yeah. sevens or sixes, which, you know, some of the other but characters are eights or nines and might have It shields. becomes one of those things, though. If you can go in there and you can burn somebody down and get them out of your area and control them as yep. fast as possible, it's not necessarily about having to stay there a long time. It's just about it's, getting in and getting it done real fast. <laughs> it's what we were mentioning at the very beginning of this stream, where I was curious if we were going to see some strategies that were less about controlling territory and more about positioning and... Uh, you know, moving around the board. And it seems like that's paying off. I'm wondering if the second one that had a 5-0 uh, also had a, a lightweight, quick team, because that could be a cool strategy. There's a massive jump ability here. Oh, yes. No, that's a good lineup. It's like, I'm going to start writing these lineups down. <laughs> start writing the lineups down, everybody. <laughs> all the 5-0 all the teams. We're just going to be keeping score of those. That's right. I want to know... What all the five O teams are playing. <laughs> so table eight was a five to three win using Goldar, Doug Run, and Lorelei, which that's that's a really good team also because Doug Run can do a lot of different things too. Like he can do like that shield bash, and you can use his reaction to hold ground so you can't be moved. Sure. So there's a lot of different options. So there. is that one then more like a control based one? I think, then? I yeah. think so. Doug Run's yeah, gonna be holding she can his root position. people too. Goldar, yeah. Goldar again, not going to be very quick at moving, but he's really going to stick to his ground and pull people in to get close to him. He kind of wants to be in your face. Yeah, and then with, with Lorelai, she's the one that has like the healing rain and grasping vines and clairvoyance, so she can do all the planning yep. and that team, move people to the ground. That team there sounds like it's way more intricate with, instead of like the team that we just saw, that's more like hit and run. <laughs> this yeah. one's like... No, no, no. We have to have all these characters working together with lots of synergy. So that's really interesting seeing that come into light with the two different strategies on those and two different really great winning strategies, apparently, you know? Well, and you can just look at their, their abilities when you upgrade it. It gives you a little bit of insight into what they're really designed to do. Goldar, for instance, the, uh, the Scourge of the Several Seas, uh, after you've got him uh, you know, upgraded by, by taking out an opponent, he becomes immune to push. And then Doug Run over here, adjacent opponents cannot attack unless Dungrun is a target of the attack. So both of these yeah. are holding their position and they want people in and close to them. Um, Absolutely. Nice. And then if she's sitting there healing, 
healing them and helping plan out to make sure you always yeah. got like one of those reactions that can like hold your ground or something. Oh yeah. yeah I then can see it, that locking it down. It I mean, becomes like, you a, can't move them. Yeah, it becomes a huge nuisance <laughs> then because you keep on trying to like whittle somebody away and it can become so focusing where you're whittling and whittling that even other things on the board can be happening and you could be scoring other trophies if somebody gets focused on that and you're just supporting that one character and they're trying to get them out of one area or something, you know? Now, with a competitive draft, as you're seeing your opponent start pulling some of these characters, what are you all thinking in terms of countering uh, either this quick team that we saw early on with that 5-0 uh, or this heavy hitter team? What are, what are some of the things that you I think they're actually for? a good matchup because if somebody's doing a yeah. team where they're trying to hold still then I'm just going to try to go in and do as much damage to them as I can. So they can stay in there all they want because I'm just going to kill them to move them. Because sure. you can't push them. Absolutely. Sure. And I like sure. fatal, fatal paper cuts line here. I guess you could say you need to know when to hold them, when to fold them, or possibly even to walk away. And I think that's super important in this particular game as a whole. You, know, you do it, know that's a song, right? I know, but oh, I'm okay. saying, I'm just, I'm just like, saying it's good. I mean, Derek, also, if, it's, if it's a song, <laughs> can you prove it's a song? <laughs> I was just, I was hey, hoping, you uh, well, no wind to hold them, no, no wind to hold them. <laughs> so good. And just my dogs are like, oh, oh. He's loving it. So good. So I'm just saying that it rings very true to this game as well, because if you're battling over one area and then like, it's just not working out for you because somebody keeps healing or something, get the heck out of there. Go do something else. Go attack something else and get your turn. I just like another way. Because I'm pretty sure our viewers could give you a lyric line and you just wouldn't know that it's from a song. And you How dare like, you? That was really insightful. Like, what he just said there. <laughs> So I thought she really yeah. didn't know. I thought maybe because she's not, she likes music, but she doesn't really listen to the lyrics. So I thought. I listen to the music and not the lyrics. Is that what you're trying to yeah, say? Yeah. So I'm like, man, yeah. does she not know that that's a song? Because this is amazing. If she doesn't know, she just thinks Fatal Paper Cuts just being no, like. No, that's a song though that the lyrics are easy to hear. It's whenever you get into things like Nirvana and stuff. It's like, you just like listen to the to, music you and not to, like, the tool? lyrics. Well, you're like, yeah. I don't know he's saying something, but I don't it's know good. what Andrew's saying. Though. I don't oh, know what he's saying, but it sounds beautiful. All is that the players, here they're in the room where it matters and i i really do hope they're not going to throw away their shot that's all i'm going to say <laughs> yes yeah i agree i agree mom's spaghetti you got to get ready um oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> it's just dust in the wind dust in the wind okay that is so insightful it's, it's important very, yeah. to not fear yeah. the reaper and uh <laughs> Here, don't go chasing Here, take waterfall my hands. town. Just stick to the rivers Ooh. and the lakes that you used to. Mm. You know what? Very That's insightful. very insightful. Yeah. You know what, Fatal? I appreciate you bringing all of this knowledge and just like this elder knowledge to us. Well, I would call that stream. team a Thank scrub. Thank you so much. And I ain't got no time for no scrubs. Sitting in the passenger side of their best friend's ride trying to holler at me. I just don't have time for that. I can understand that. I literally that. don't have time for scrubs. <laughs> See, I want to pull references to the music I listen to, but it's all just like earthy bluegrass with like 10,000 hits on each video. Y'all wouldn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that country me. It's the because you're well, you're from Kentucky, right? I'm bluegrass. I'm heart and soul Kentucky, man. Okay. okay. <laughs> I lived in Kentucky for a little while, for about that four counts. years. We'll drink bourbon together. But well, I don't know if that go. really counts because I was at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. So like I was there. I can't say if you like necessarily were there because you weren't. You didn't spend most of your time in Kentucky. I spent most of my time in Kentucky. <laughs> That's true. You probably spent more time there than I did. I, I got deployed a bunch, but yeah, I was, so, in, I was adjacent. Alice Sidero. So where we're seeing games is you go over to Tabletopia, mm -hmm. and if you go to Mythic Games, they have a well, you championship. Just Super Fantasy Brawl. Right, sorry. Super Fantasy Brawl, you're correct. They actually have a championship sort of page here. Do you want to scroll up to the top so they can kind of see what oh, the page looks know. like? Oh, this. it's okay. Yeah. It, they have a championship page here where you can scroll down. You can see where the games are going to be at, and you can mm -hmm. actually drop in on these games and you can watch. Yeah, mm -hmm. watch them. And like this is the it says tournament edition underneath it, and I'm not sure where people are seeing these other games because I'm only seeing the one that just finished up here that we just watched. That's the only game in progress yeah, I had, see. We've had three games so far wrap up with some pretty significant victories, uh, and I know there's going to be more cycling through. So. Absolutely. It should be an event for uh, until noon, I think, that they were saying as far as that goes. And yep. these rounds are Swiss rounds. So you're getting points based on wins, losses, and draws in this. And okay. the rounds are set at an hour each, I believe, on this. So it's 
like it's the primo way to do it. I love Swiss rounds. So somebody so else just everybody won. gets points. Somebody else just won with Kilgore, Nevermore, and Lorelai. So there's a lot mm. of variety in these teams. Like sometimes Let's when you get see. into these types of things, like in a magic tournament or something like that, you see the same teams battling each other over and over and over again. And you're like, oh, these are basically the exact same decks or the exact same team layout, and they're just fighting each other. And whoever gets the better card pools or maneuvers a slightly better is going to win. But all these teams have been different. Mm -hmm. So Kilgore and then the two, uh, Nevermore and Lorelai are both from the expansion, right? They're not from that core set. Kilgore. Um, Lorelai is from the nature one. Yeah. And yeah. Then so Nevermore. I'm not seeing it on my table here. I might be overlooking it. I think yeah, Nevermore, Nevermore is from the expansion also. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, so, so two expansion characters, and then we've got uh, Kilgore here as well. How's this team going to operate? Let's look through these decks a little bit and try to figure out so, what they're doing. I really like playing with Nevermore a lot because that is the character that has swoop in there where I said that you can actually go through four different squares there. So if you line it up correctly and you have your competitor who has multiple characters, they're all clumped together. You can actually hit multiple characters going through. Not only can you damage them, but you can also fear them which puts them out of position, especially if they are grouping in, you know, around one of the statues and everything there. So uh, I really like Nevermore. And he's a support character where mm. you're going to be, you actually have like a teleport where you can get one of the other characters that comes over to them and then he buffs them. So using Nevermore in a group is super fantastic. I totally recommend doing it. It's a well, lot of fun, a lot of maneuverability with all of your characters because of them. So are there more people? Are there other people that are able to see more games because they're a VIP on Tabletopia? Oh, is that what somebody's saying? Maybe. That could be, okay, that could be a good well, you all check out that. And I just want to say that Nevermore is an interesting pairing with Kilgore because Kilgore specifically is going to be focused on, I mean, like the namesake says, kind of taking out your enemy. Uh, with right. abilities that reward based based on life seals, so so as you're hitting people, you're going to be able to uh, to absorb some of their life um, and a lot of in your face attack, push, and position. Um, pretty strong pairing because Nevermore being a support character there, giving giving and putting Kilgore in a position to take down some folks. Um, I'm wondering I'm wondering if that's how some of those victories happened. I'd like to I'd like to see a victory that happens during this tournament where. Uh, Basically, basically, all five trophies were, were predominantly won just from wiping out uh, an entire team. That'd be an interesting. That would be strategy. interesting. To see. <laughs> I don't think it happens very often, but it would be an interesting thing to see. That would be really fantastic to see. I'm gonna try logging in a little differently, so hopefully we can see more tables on here. So you think it's it could be that premium premium uh, service? It might be gives you access to a few extras. But we're streaming this from my computer, and uh, so I, I'm not actually logged in. So we're going to try to log in as her and see if that makes a difference. Cool. Because typically we play everything off the main one. Okay, so now we're logged in. It's out of there. We're still just seeing the one game in I'll double check if I have the status on it there. If I need to. Oh, here we go. Right there. Go premium. All right. May need to update here for a second. You go ahead and do your thing, Doctor. All right. And what else do we have out here? Don't worry. I have a duck. It's called the distraction <laughs> duck. <laughs> I'll hold. I'll hold down the fort for sixty seconds. Well, there you go. You and your duck. Just take this over, Jesse. Just, you got just this. Do you and off this adorable duck for it only lasts just... for sixty seconds, but I've got it. Trust me. This will hold down. This will keep the audience's attention. It'll Wait hold down the fort. Where did you get this duck from? Isn't this not even like your place? Like... Oh, no, no, no. You don't understand. So I, I am I'm here at, at Sarah Shaw's house with Jan. We're up in uh, Ithaca, New York. And uh, this duck this duck came with me to be left on set here. I can't have oh. her doing her, her one-minute board game videos without, uh, without a few ducks in the background. That was really nice. And when she, when she visited us in, uh, in Washington, D.C., we sent her home with this duck. So... Now she has Aww. the full. She has the full collection. So now she has the full collection of decks. That's very nice. <laughs> Whenever she needs her quest, <laughs> <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. These are these are these are endangered resources, uh, and they bring a smile to people's face. This one specifically, just a little bit hunchback. If you notice, Aww. he's a little he's a little squat. I think it makes him cute. You know, I actually used to collect little rubber ducks, except it was always the ones with like ridiculous hats on and stuff and like. 
they always had to be very unique. You know, you had like Christmas ducks, Halloween ducks, yeah. with, like little ghost hoods on and stuff and like little like scary faces and stuff. Like it was super cute, but you know. So, so Luke just popped in saying, Hey, I just got here. Uh, how are y'all doing today? Glory hunt. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I had to get up early though. And that was not pleasing for me. <laughs> I don't get up early anymore, especially with everything going on. Everybody's like in their house and stuff all the time. Like there's no need to actually get up early at all. So I, wait. I don't get up at all. I just, I just <laughs> stay up through the night and then I never yeah. have to get up early. This I'm just up. Makes a lot of sense. This makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> So how, how do you how do you think I get everything done? It's a lack of sleep and a you know high amount of bourbon. <laughs> All right, let's see here. We have Game and Tech Corner. Yeah, first round done. We'll be a little while until round two on their game. I let's think we should here. be swinging into them pretty close. We're figuring out how to see some of the some of the tournament seats that we uh, we haven't been able to see earlier this morning. It seems like there might be uh, we might need a premium edition with uh, with Tabletopia to see a, a ton of different seats. Um, so if so, anything, I mean, I'm very charming. So stay tuned. <laughs> game, and at Game and Tech Corner, I got there round one with Maru's paired with Kilgore and Doug Run. So let me take a look at that. Round one, Maru's paired with Kilgore and Doug Okay, Dug yeah, Run. there's Maru's. Kay and Smith, if you're able to tell us what was your thought behind this, what was your thought behind this team? What were you trying to do and did it work? That's an interesting combination Kilgore, here. So like I'm said, now. I consider him sort of a bruiser. I think he wants to get in people's face. I think he wants to take down opponents. Mm -hmm. uh, Doug Run is going to be that was we saw that on the other team that was more about holding ground, uh, tactical positioning, and just not leaving your spot. Uh, and then what was that last one? The last one was uh, uh, Kilgore, Doug Maruz. Run, and Maruz, which Maruz is got knocked my out man. early, but bounced back with getting him leveled up. Yeah. One five two. Maroos is uh Maroos is speedy. Is that right, Glory Hound? Yes, Maroos and Maroos. I feel like is going to get knocked out. Maroos frequently gets knocked out, but put back in. But is able to get back into that fight over and over again. When Maroos gets bloodied, like things get dangerous. He just gets stronger, and that's where that's why he gets knocked out so often. Because you want to get. My roots bloodied. Sure. And then you want to be able to use their abilities to the fullest potential. And then like, oh, okay. You know, he died, goes back, and then just bring him back. And if like with me, whenever I have my roots, I combine them with Nevermore. So then I can also get him back faster because of that. So like well, really good synergy with other characters. And K Smith mentioned uh the thing that changed it was getting Maru's up to level two, which like you were saying, Glory Hound is gonna be a big deal because Maru's mm -hmm. here. Once you're able to take out another character with him, if you're able to utilize that uh, that bloodied ability, Maru's, Maru's attack gains lifesteal while Maru's is bloodied. So you flip that card over, and you just start cycling back and forth between doing damage, getting hit, doing damage, getting hit. Um, Absolutely. It's a pretty powerful... That's a, this, is a, this is a pretty powerful combination. Uh, this is a pretty aggressive combination. It is. It is. And that's, that's the sort of combination that I'm always excited about, is those... Get in there, kill what you got to kill, or get in there and get what you need to get, and then get out. My you know? my assumption is going to be that Kilgore, uh, Dung Run just played defense, right? But Kilgore probably did a little bit of damage to set up for Maroos getting uh, getting his bloodied ability and flipping over to level two. I don't assume Maroos was able to do all of the damage necessary early on. Uh, I'd assume that this was kind of a team effort in order to get him flipped, but strategically. It's a really smart plan. Get someone wounded, get them weak and vulnerable, and then activate Maru's uh, special ability. Absolutely. And Maru's also has some lifesteal cards in there as well. So, like, you yep. can really set them up to just be on that border there of being bloodied and then continually carrying out really now, great attacks and stuff. With only seven health, the border there of being bloodied is only three damage away it's from death. It's very thin. It's and very you have, thin. You have no shield. So I also <laughs> wonder. I also wonder if Doug Run was played because of his uh, the the amount of this card right here. I think I bet that card right there yeah. had to come into play. Hold ground negate. is really big. Exactly. This is going to allow you to negate uh, any displacement effect caused by the attack. So just uh, just keep position. Don't let Maroos get into a uh, vulnerable position. Don't let him get pulled forward. Like if you're playing against Goldar or something, uh, that's a. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm interested. I would like to see. I would uh, I would like to see that gameplay. 
I know, right? So we have Phantom of Truth that says, Chairman says hi. Hello. Charmaine says hi. Oh, oh. Charmaine. Hola. Charmaine says Charmaine. hi. Charmaine. 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 It, says, Charmaine. it says Charmaine. Oh, no, wait. There's I no mixed a. up the There's hi. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the case, a solid quack back to you. Hello. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so I don't know if Battle Cry just like tricked me into buying the premium edition <laughs> of this, but I did, and I don't see any new games. So, <laughs> aha, it's jokes on me. Battle you just Cry. made me spend ten dollars. Do you think that'll help? How dare you? No, I bought the premium, uh, me, but no, there's... don't worry. I'll swing in. I'll purchase the premium as well. We'll just see if that also uh, that also helps. Battle Cry, can yeah, you absolutely. let us know? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Battle Cry is just like, everybody buy the premium. Just Battle get Cry all of the premium, and then Tabletopia will be really, really happy. So, so I, have a, <laughs> I have a text comment coming in from my Discord. I didn't expect this, but uh, Hecking said, uh, at Quackalope, I commented on the Fantasy Brawl video, but the yellow hoodie you're wearing is so cool. I really like it. Uh, I'm doing that for my own vanity, because I just got this hoodie yesterday, and I legitimately want to order a second one. Uh, this is uh, It's made by an artist called Ten Hundred who's another YouTube content creator. Um, and I am thrilled that I look like a rubber duck right now. You have no idea. <laughs> What's a YouTube? You just, you just well, we're on the YouTube right now. So. Yeah. Well, glory, I've got a lot to teach you, my friend. So this is live is what you're saying? No. Gotcha. Nope, nope. We told you at the very beginning that this was going to be completely private. It's just for us. Okay, cool. Because I was a little worried there for a minute. Oh, uh, let's see. In fact, Chini played Corvash to uh, Sue and Goldar uh, as well on that. So a lot of Goldar, seems like. A lot of Goldar. I haven't played with Goldar yet. So that is He's one fun. of the characters that, yeah, that I believe. Have you played with Goldar? I thought you had. No, Goldar isn't one I've played with because he looked like he was going to be a smelly pirate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Uh, first off, what is wrong with smelly pirates? Second off. Uh, let's cycle through just a few of his cards here so we can show. <laughs> I like showing off the artwork, um, but you're going to notice once we get to it, you're going to notice one of those cards that uh, is focused. There's your pool ability right here. Yeah, so you're able, you're able to move forward, throw out your harpoon, hook someone and pull them forward. Uh, we've got a uh, draw one ability that's going to give you a little bit of a buff. We have uh, set sail which is going to give you a significant amount of dash, uh, and you're going to be able to deal a, a lot of damage based on uh, how many enemies you're able to move through. So that's some fast uh, fast movement there. And then Anchors Ahoy, if you're able to position this one right, it can do a lot of damage to, uh, to multiple characters at once. So I usually try to set up something like Anchors Ahoy uh, with another character who gives me a damage buff on the very next attack. Because um, if you can position that, then this becomes, this becomes an even more uh, deadly attack. And hello to Nemesis Games. Thank you so much. Uprising, Curse of the Last Empire. Nemesis Games. <laughs> or Curse of the Last Empire. Now I'm nervous. So <laughs> Battle Cry was just making fun of me. So oh. good call. Thank you, Battle oh Cry. You cost me what? ten dollars a month. He's like, I don't know. It's not so being cool enough to hang out with the big kids. <laughs> wow, Battle Cry. Wow. <laughs> I thought maybe by not being premium, we were missing out on some of the games that we're missing be out on all the things. Here, and no, no, apparently, apparently not. not. Apparently not. Apparently so I don't know. Are, are some people watching it on Discord or something? Be, uh, some of them must be equipped and playing, but not quite linked into this main hub. Uh, when it comes to like tournaments happening that aren't directly in that Tabletopia hub, um, yeah, that's I, my assumption. I, I feel like maybe somebody's playing. They're playing. Some of these teams are playing on like Discord instead or something. Oh, gotcha. Or something. Where you can see them more on Discord and stuff. Because currently, there's no games going right now for Super Fantasy Brawl. Well, you... victories are coming in. So whether or not there's... I mean, there are games happening. It's just uh, the streamers here have to be charming and entertaining. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave then. No, I'll doctor, doctor. You're sometimes charming and yeah. entertaining. Okay, have a, here, so. have a trophy. Ta-da! <laughs> A tiny, tiny trophy. We should have just got out our own board and just started casually playing. Be like, no. <laughs> Let's see here. If we can go ahead and so we're not seeing any of the newer games coming up. Oh man. Uh, there's not any listed, right? Oh, here we go. Created just now. Created just now. So there's two of them that are created just now that are going to be coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once so they actually load in another person, we'll jump in. I want. I want to keep an eye out to see if we see some pairings that we've seen utilized already. Uh, moving into these next rounds and determine if if we can see who we think might have the advantage just based off of what we've the feedback we've seen so far. Okay. Mm. 
Yeah, I think it's the same people on that there that are coming up for their second rounds on that because they are doing <laughs> at least two to three rounds on, on yeah. those. Jan, my co-host, is being camera shy at the moment. <laughs> is he? <laughs> he's in. He's handsome. He's charming. He's Puerto Rican, and yet he won't come on stream. <laughs> Seems like a first. So usually he's all over that screen. I he loves like. being on camera. He complains all the time when he doesn't get to share the spotlight with me. He's embarrassed because of how bad I destroyed him at that game I was telling you all about a little bit earlier. Here's what we did. Let me tell you this, Glory Hand. I think you'll enjoy this. Okay. I, I taught him the game. We did a run through. We did a test run. And then we sat down to play. I, I beat him. He threw a fit. I reset the game. The same <laughs> game. The same game. I rewound it by a turn or two. Exact same thing. I beat him again. Uh, we reset again because he was still grumpy about what had happened. I beat him three times in one game. I think that is a – I mean, I think that gives me the ultimate championship. And you're just going to call him out on, on listen, the internet like that? Listen, he's sitting right next that to me. That feels bad. Sitting right next to me. I figure, I figure this is the perfect moment to do so. If he so wasn't – So much burn. That's – Right here. <laughs> I'm just saying, if Dr. Glory Hogg did that to me, that would end with some fog of divorce right there, okay? No <laughs> we called out that hard on the Dan internet. And, Dan and I are still working on the fog of love portion. We'll, we'll get to that other, we'll get to that other <laughs> cycle other sooner portion. or later. Watch out for that first Ikea trip. That one is killer. Ooh, yeah. I, I cannot wait. We're going to hold hands the whole way through the building. <laughs> it looks like they're starting to do their pairings for round two and everything, but they're not quite up yet. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to try to say all these names backwards. So instead of Cole, it's going to be no. Low, low, low. <laughs> no. And then, no? No, so, not at all. So some decks that we haven't seen utilized yet. We or have some not characters seen, we haven't seen yet. Yeah, yeah, we have not seen Ak 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 Aket. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that too. It's going to be the light of creation. What do you think's going on there? Why are we not pulling Aket down onto the board? And you would think we would have stars. a spot though with like having the one shield, right? And then having... And then having eight, that's a pretty good that's a pretty good starting place to be at. It's like a start a good starting place. It's also a bird, which I'm always uh, I'm always partial to. Are you partial um, to birds? Uh, slightly, slightly. I just I'm not quite sure. A lot of movement here with with Aket. Uh, a lot of positioning. I just don't know if it's working into the strategy. We've seen a lot of bruisers and support characters, but uh, Aket right. is going to be a lot more around uh, moving across the board. Right? Am I accurate about that? Yeah, I think so. I think that's definitely where it's going to be the strong point. And, but we haven't seen Darren either, which is like all about using traps. So, which is surprising because there's going to be four traps out on the board. And if you use them correctly and you get bonuses for them, then I don't see why you wouldn't want to use that character. So, Mark, we were doing it on Tabletopia on there for this one. This one's being ran on Tabletopia, I mm -hmm. believe. And I don't know why Ket's not being utilized either because... Their yep. ability on the back of their card is so powerful, too, where you can just basically discard those red cards in your hand, and you're just getting pluses to your attack power on there. Like, I feel like that would be huge to try to go ahead and get them turned over, leveled up, and then be able to use that it, in, like, some really big hit. I think for me, it'd be a similar strategy to the one that we saw Maru's used with, uh, where you position, you get into a place where you can where you can flip Maru's over. Uh, I think a Aket maybe has to be the cornerstone of the of the team you're building. Um, yeah. And if you didn't build around, if you didn't build around flipping, like you're pointing out, Glory Hand Hound, maybe uh, maybe maybe you go with some other characters first. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, even so, like they have a pretty high health and one shield, so that's interesting. I'm gonna have to go back and revisit them and. Kind of work out what's going on with that. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. I'm getting it more and more like of these. They're oh, setting up their nice. teams right now. So we've Who got we Wayne and, and Suzao. Is that how you say that? Yeah. So Which so we Gwen, haven't seen them like either. We've said like we've said ranged, uh, able to do able to move around the board with her teleport ability, and Suzao always approached as as a a little bit of a bruiser. Like you kind of want to fight with him, but like we've all pointed out, he seems to go down quick because you put him in vulnerable positions and he doesn't have that shield. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but he's got the nine hit points is kind of definitely the big advantage there, but there's some pull. So it seems like pull is really important in this tournament. Putting him in vulnerable po positions might be really key though, because I know that his special ability as well is negating those shields. So 
I mean, sometimes you have to set some people up as some cannon fodder. You are playing a three-person team on there. Sure. And some, some of those people need, may need to be just like the distraction. If you, <laughs> if you were building this deck right now, who would you be, be pulling into this mix? Who's going to pair? Oh, well, we have Kolel. against Zuzao, I would actually be trying to bring in somebody like Maruz because one of okay. the things that Zuzao can do is make people bloodied. And so if you're playing a character that wants to be bloodied, it seems like that's a good counter to that. What do we think about this team? We've got we've got Gwyn, uh, Tuzao, and Kolel, which two core support characters. And then, like you said, Tuzao might be one of those that you're using as a bruiser. Might be one of those that you're using just to kind of be vulnerable. Yeah, like some cannon fodder. I think in they're, they're going to really lean really heavily on Gwyn. I think that's probably where okay. most of their damage is going to be, and they're going to use a lot of Kolei's like moving, like moving around and using those special lizard licks to kind of get stuff done. <laughs> The special lizard licks, is yeah. that what it is? <laughs> I, I could see a really interesting Gwen to Zhao uh, combination that now that you're pointing that out, because Gwen can do some significant damage as long as she's not being pulled into the fray. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. a ton. That's What's our huge. other team looking like over here? Let's see what they're matching up against. I'm worried about a I'm worried about a bruising team. Uh people that don't need to move that just need to hold their Ooh. position. Another two Zhao. Okay. And then uh we've gone from none to now they both have one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this one here, they're definitely putting Suze out like up front, and then they're going to use Sulka and Nevermore as those support characters, just kind of working their magic in the plan. shadows. I think mm -hmm. strategically, has all that movement. Mm -hmm. I think the strategy is going to be very similar for both of these players, where Suze is really up front, like you said, being the block. Uh, and the support characters are the ones that are, you're going to be really leaning on to, uh, to not only secure territory, uh, but also just secure kind of damage and positioning on the board. We will we'll probably see a lot of uh, other player manipulation in this game. Definitely. Oh, this is going to be interesting. What's our first trophies that are coming out? To kind of see what they're shooting yeah. for right out of the bat. It's kind of nice to get them, see them put their teams to actually together. I like, I like starting right here because we can get a sense and we can talk about where I might go with this. Right. So this is tough. So the first one, they want to have two leveled up champions. So that means they got to go in there right away and just kill two players, I, which isn't going to happen that first turn. I would sure. immediately not start planning, especially with the teams we have built here. I would ignore that card. I would start I would start prepping yeah. for the cards that I'm pretty sure are going to come out later on in this deck. Yeah. Absolutely. And then since I'm imagining both players are probably looking at that first card and going, eh, that's probably not super possible this early in the game. game. Right. We've right. already got people that are kind of been hit a couple times. You're so, like, mm, can I knock out one more person and level up? But there's going to be good. a huge, huge rush to one side of the board to get this one, one portion of this one challenge done right here. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see how that's handled because. I might, I might, knowing that that there's going to be more territory control zones come out, I might send one character towards yellow, just keep the other player from scoring it, and yeah. then maybe deploy in position closer to red and blue, just ready and ready and waiting for whatever is going to be cycling next. But you can always sit in the, you know, sit on the corner of red and yes. still damage people that are in yellow most of the time. So it's Absolutely. always a good idea to be close. Well, that's going to do a little sidestep. That's going to be a really good option for this grouping right here which i'm guessing is kadir i think i think this is kadir's side here because these two here sulka and nevermore are support characters that stay outside so leaving them yeah. in maybe those red and blue areas and then moving them in and out would be a great strategy for kadir right now so i'm interested to see how that plays forward let's see the other characters over here and then as far as this goes, yeah, leaving Gwen on this outskirts and then, mm -hmm. yeah, having just one character in there. I can see that. I can see that going and setting yourself up for other rounds as you go along. Kolei is actually really good. Like I said, it has a lot of movement. So you can do jumps and pulls and stuff like that. And I think you could really get yourself in a good position like last minute where you don't expect yep. it. And the very last thing they do on their turn is just boop, move into an area and take control. And then you've got to move them out. You put all the onus on your opponent. Be like, you've got to figure out something to do to get rid of me. All and right. Yeah, poison too. Carbo here is Remy. So we have Kadir, who is Petrick, and Carbo as Remy playing here. It's I'm totally, I'm totally gonna gonna open up and eat a little bit of the leftover Thanksgiving dinner, by the way, because <laughs> we're hitting we're hitting midday, and I drove it's all a night. Long, so. It's a long day i totally no, no. understand does have it's, that. it's not a long we day it is literally me not prepping <laughs> enough and forgetting that i'd never eat breakfast so i'm sitting here i'm sitting here going a little bit of thanksgiving wouldn't be bad 
a little bit of Thanksgiving right now, so you can just tease everybody at home. You're like, Jan, I'm eating delicious things. <laughs> listen, Jan, Jan brought it for me. I was alone on Thanksgiving. I uh, wasn't able to go see my grandparents this year, uh, but I did I did get to call them on a live stream, which was a lot of fun. But Jan, Jan surprised me when I picked him up this morning with, with some turkeys, so that's Aww, been very cool. Oh, that was so nice. That you weren't was so exactly nice. alone. You had all of Quackalo behind you. Well, that's also we true. Did, busy. We did throw a mini convention. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a really busy day. Oh, look at the trap set up here. It's all on the one side of the board. They're like, nope, we don't want, we want it to be as difficult as possible getting over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That whole board on this side is just leaning. Like you Ooh. said, a rush to a rush to yellow, securing that yeah. zone right off the bat. You think they're going to double down just thinking that yellow and red might be where, where they, they're going to lean into their strategy? I don't know. Like, I think they have to. I'm, that other, I'm actually, that other team's kind of doing what I said I would do, though, leaving two characters yeah. back and sticking uh, sticking a heavy hitter up front. Well, yeah, I'm surprised, actually, that this team right here is going heavy on one side because two of these characters are so maneuverable. Mm -hmm. But maybe they were thinking they would get Nevermore in here for a super fast, like, pick up and win. Like, they couldn't get... Like the other player won't get enough of their characters over there in, in time. An early, so like, vic early victory point could, I mean, honestly, in this game, an early victory point could be the difference. Mm -hmm. But what they do have Gwen there prepped just on the outskirts, like ready to like throw some throw some fire in there. So <laughs> that's going to be interesting to see that play out. You got all the writing down on here. Yeah, I'm just like writing down the team, so it's easier the teams for me on to here. track. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then this team right here with Nevermore and Solka, that is for Kaldar? Yep. Yep, that's right. That is Petrick. And Petrick has such an interesting long last name. I'm never going to be able to mm -hmm. say it. It's Desmonoix. Desmonoix. But uh, you Desmo will keep it is, attempting it, and that's what's important. It is fantastical, though, I'm sure. It's said in person. It probably has, like, a nice ring to it, you know? <laughs> Oh, okay. There you go, Jesse. So yeah, so they are. They're splitting. Front. They're like splitting. Mm -hmm. I'm a little surprised. I I do not like having Gwen anywhere near I, where I'm afraid someone's going to touch her. I agree. With, <laughs> I would agree with you for the most part. But early game like this, she's dangerous if people get too close to her, and the odds of them pushing past yellow. Uh, right now, they just want to secure yellow for that early victory point. So I, I, I don't know if she's in much danger. Are you saying that Gwen is semi like a cat where it's like, oh, don't touch me. I'm just no. sitting here. You can't touch me. <laughs> just a soft ball of fur with razor sharp, like with razor sharp claws. Soft, that's right. A soft that's right. ball of fur with razor sharp claws. <laughs> Jan, I feel like I've said that to you before. <laughs> He's right next this, to me. I think you're, I think you're always glued right? in the commentary. That's right. When he's, when he's hosting next week, I'm sure he'll take a few shots in my direction as well. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, and then we'll get to hear the whole other side of everything we, and how, how mean you were and that you just trounced him on those games one after another just to be a jerk he's about it. He's going that you forgot to tell him the rules about like how to get trophies oh, yeah, and stuff. I'm that's sure right. he will. Don't listen to him. Look, Quackalope, <laughs> Quackalope is going to be doing a full representation here with both of us with both of us hosting, uh, hosting these streams together. I'm excited about it. Oh, look at that. I thought that they were going to move the other player into that blue territory just in case. Do we have any more goals out? I want to see these here. Apologies on my maneuverability here. Yeah, have you ever maneuvered before? I apparently I have I not maneuvered. Two or more champions in a trap hex. Okay, so that's why I was like, how are, why are they going for those traps? But now that makes sense because I was seeing characters starting to land on traps. Yeah, it Two looked, or more characters. It looked like there was an early, like, trying to predict what one of those cards might be when they moved into blue there. And yeah. uh, I don't, I just don't think it paid off. Well, right away, did they get that one for they the did. yellow? They did. they did. Right away they for went, the one. Gave it, just, gave it to boom. them. And I think giving, I honestly think giving a victory point up that early on in the game could be a, uh, a sign of uh, a sign of a loss. Um, I'm not sure. It's it's definitely not a surefire thing, but I think that was that was probably... They were hoping they were hoping that strategy would pay off, and I don't think it, it has. And so I think yeah. they're on their heels now. Yeah, they got to find a way to definitely make up for that lost point because even in scoring two, it's just going to get them up ahead one. Five points yep. is not a lot of points, so it like isn't. you really do have to count every single tiny little detail of what you're doing whenever you're going through this. Like, 
I mean, one trophy is a win or loss in that. So, I mean, oh my goodness. So, Duffin and doing some movement there. Bringing their Jade Claw right up into the mix. <laughs> I want to see if anybody's gotten damage. Okay, so damage wise, what do we got here? Yeah, there's damage on those. Some characters. ranged hits, just like we were saying. Gwen up front there was able to get some peppered hits on the other team. Yeah. All right, we got a couple damage here on Suzao, but that's not too bad because he's mm. got nine health on there. That's not a problem. And at all. Gwen still has not been hit. Like I was saying, she yeah. she was a little bit vulnerable, but she was able to get some strikes in and. Uh, and no one was going after her to start because they wanted that victory point. Wayne is such a powerful that character like on, that. On, yeah. On uh, Tus uh, Tuso, though. Oh, this is not looking good here for Kadir. Yeah, yeah because one having... Of those, one of those Jade Cats is going down. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> having all that damage there on Suzao yep. on this side is not going to be good at all. It you got is... yourself a classic Highlander situation here. There uh, can it... only be one, Suzao. <laughs> It, well, but it is what we, it is what from the beginning, what we were kind of thinking. Tuzao up front, taking <laughs> taking a lot of that early damage, uh, but protecting some of the support characters. You know what, though? It, this That line doesn't have the same sort of feeling as it does in person whenever you take out Suzao and you're like, there can only be one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what an epic line for a mid tournament like that. You're like, you jerk. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, All Car right, what sort of other cards so we have? is now just redrawing their hand. So I'm looking yeah, at the new one, new one coming out here. I have three champions adjacent to the same statue. Wow, they have some really These are interesting the, cards uh, coming out. Positioning and strategic movement as opposed to as opposed to just controlling zones. Yeah. Um, I like this card a lot whenever this comes out in, in a game for me because it opens the door for... It opens the door for secure, securing not only some interesting positions, uh, but also any of my characters are now eligible to try to, to try to score that. Yeah. So this is going to be interesting. Because I mean, it's any statue, so you just got to get all three of them piled in there. Yeah. in By That's one it. statue, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. That trap one, though, is dangerous, because if you land on the wrong traps, that's just going to hurt you. I mean, it hurts you overall, but, like, it becomes... Is it worth one? Is it worth one little? Uh, my there's always a risk or two or like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like my my opinion is those trap that trap card right there that is going to be worth two. Uh, that's you, one that you save till it's worth a little bit more, and then you take the risk to try to secure it. You need to, you know, because yeah. it's not worth it damaging your character, having the risk of damaging your character. Well, think about just it. One trophy. You could be giving up a trophy due to that damage along earning, alongside earning one. So right. a one a one for two trade is going to be worthwhile. But if you're just doing a one for one, you're at the same position you were at the beginning. That's a dangerous little one to do there. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I would re be that because risky. You just, you just don't know what's <laughs> in those traps. Yeah. I'd just be sitting and waiting outside those traps and being like, yes, yes, hit the traps now. <laughs> Ooh. That's really okay. moving that character. Yeah, they are. There we go. Right between both those traps there. Which makes it, it makes them in line of sight of a lot of different attacks. I feel like as you're putting the traps down, you always have to sing the trap song upon any traps going down you gotta Wait. go traps 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 <laughs> i was wondering where you were going with that and i was pleasantly <laughs> i was pleasantly surprised she knows one song and that's it <laughs> successful geek woohoo glory hound bringing some awesome credibility to this tournament despite the quackalope being involved <laughs> mm -hmm. I, thank you listen. successful geek <laughs> I am not going to argue against a geek who is both a geek and successful at the same time. That is a Which respectable I've only man. been one of those things. The it only one of those things. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I've never been either. There you go. I'm a Aww. sham. I'm a sham at this hobby, and I'm also unsuccessful at doing so. <laughs> you don't even. You don't even play games, though, do you? I, uh, as far as my community is concerned, no, I've never played a game. Never ever. <laughs> Have you we haven't played, seen it uh, happen. Kingdom so. Death Monster, that's a pretty good one. You should check it out. <laughs> Not correctly, apparently. I posted a video for the Patreon and the uh, the list of uh, the list of analysis that was done by one of my Patreon members both thoroughly appreciated, but dear God, I don't know my favorite game. <laughs> 
So the way I always explain it when, I, when we're playing games is I, I very much tell people it's a, it's a do you want to play? Because it, just like anybody else, if you're at somebody's house, you're playing a game, you're going to mess up stuff. You're going to accidentally house rule things or everyone's going to have a different interpretation of something. You just have to make a decision and play the game. The idea is to have fun, just like it's, you would at somebody's house. I'm not going to sit with the rule book at someone's house and be like, according to subparagraph 3.2, you're wrong. That's just you play, not how you I play. play for fun. I play for honor and credibility. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what yeah, the no. tournament tournament's about, right? Bragging. That's rights. weird. I play to win, so well, I play tournaments to win. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see what it is, is for fun. You win often enough that Glory Hog has to be having fun. If he wasn't, oh. there's just no motivation to play the game. <laughs> oh, uh, so much burn! <laughs> so much burn! It hurts. I was going to go to BG stats and start pulling. I can feel stuff. it over here. I can feel the burn. He's gonna, over yeah, here. he's going to start defending his honor here soon. Getting hot. It's, get, it's getting bad. <laughs> it is interesting, though, though, when you play with the same person all the time, you find that there are certain games that they are really good at. And you're like, man, I'm not playing any like area control. She def- she beats me down in area control all the time. This one, for some reason, I can usually do OK, because at least there's some cards to help mitigate. There's some good reactiveness sure. in this game, which I'm not as good with. I'm good at long term planning, and that works really well in area control. But this one has so much more reactiveness to it because of reaction cards and stuff like that and then the different trophies that you can get along the way and that you're trying to go for that come out at different times and stuff so yeah it kind of messes up my whole area control thing that i do sometimes so See, this is the sweet spot for me i want a game that gives me toys to play with like not a hardcore strategy not a ton of planning ahead uh and for me drawing up those five cards and immediately reacting to not only the the puzzle that's on the board uh, <laughs> Mythic Games, seriously? <laughs> well, uh, all right. Burns gonna, all around. I was, Burns all- I, was, I was saying something informative, but I'm just going to end the conversation there. Thank you so much for having me, Mythic Games. I'm going to Thank you. I'm taking my pie and I'm going home. <laughs> so many burns all around on that. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh my lot. goodness. So once again, we see another team that has a lot yeah. of damage on us. What's they just took some damage over there. Yeah, oh their damage gosh. is piling up but over that's here. Sort of what I, would yeah. expect. I mean, that's sort of what I would expect with, uh, yeah. with Gwen over there on the other side. She's able to do this. This is why we were saying she's so dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look at that. Seven. But I do believe we have what, a one to one trophy on this, right? Is, we do right is now. Is that what I'm seeing right now? What are those new cards that have come out? What are they trying to do at the moment? I see a blue control. Here. Okay, let's take a look here. Yeah, so there's a new blue control one. No one's going for that leveled up champions, which no. they might now that everyone's all beat up. Could be. Could be focusing on some damage. It might Maybe. Be I didn't take a quick look and see. Yeah. If you're able to kill one, if you're able to kill two killer characters, get this trophy plus the that's two game. kills, that's three trophies. Yeah, you're pretty yeah. much just one. I'm surprised. So now that this trap one has come into the double trophy zone here, that's going to be a good one to get. But with some of us, the team yeah, I was going to say, it. with We're some of hurt. them, yeah, being too hurt, that's actually really, really bad. Like that puts it them out of the running for those trophies mm-hmm. on that. You know, they can't really risk it. I mean, they're already at so three would kill like Zhao and would kill Soka. If yeah, they take that three. Their Nevermore would be fine, but the other two characters would just you still die. have to have more on there. Yeah. So it's a risk. I mean, you can still go for it. Just hope that it's not the three damage trap. I don't think you but... do. I don't think I move someone into a trap zone if it could be the thing that takes them out. No, not me. I'm not. I'm not a risky player like that. I couldn't do, I it. Do, it. Yeah, <laughs> you do it. Yeah, you would do it. You're like, I, I got it. I do it. <laughs> oh, there you go. The mythic's <laughs> apologies. <laughs> I mean, I'll take. I'll take a solid love, you brother. <laughs> So, Alicia says, Mystic, can you post the Facebook group with the winners and their teams? Great I'm idea. pretty sure, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure Mythic will do a full rundown of all that stuff here whenever it's it's finished. I think that getting it all together and everything, this, since this is the first tournament, you don't always know what to expect and what to put out there for everybody. But I'm sure they'll go ahead and do that for you. There's always a difference, too, depending on how you actually get your heroes. So, if you're doing a competitive draft versus coming in with a pre-made team of just sure. being able to pick whatever characters you want, that's when I think you see a lot more team crossover. But when you're reacting to the other person picking a character, then you kind of have, okay, well, they're playing that character. Maybe I want to play this character. And you might not be as strong with that character or know that character as much, but you know they're a good counter. No, oh, that's so true. That makes a really big difference as far as team makeup. That's very true. 
Because there's definitely a time where you can show up with your your fancy team and you're like, oh, ready? You come to the scenario and then you find out <laughs> that way that scenario works, you're dead. You're like, this did not work out in my favor. I'm surprised that... Oh, someone have... just got taken out. Yeah. Wow. There's that lightning strike that just hit right there. Totally Looks has like to it. be, right? Chain lightning. Chain lightning, yeah. Chain lightning. Which is this perfect. is the card that I was talking about. You get that positioned right, you're going to be doing a pile of damage and it can, it can even stretch onto other players. It didn't in this case... Uh, but that was enough to uh, to go ahead and wipe out that character there. Which, that's a trophy. It is. It is. And that's uh, that's potentially leveling up to a position where you can uh, where you can you can secure that uh, that two leveled up. The other, yeah, the other two characters leveled up trophy. Ooh, there we go. Are we getting one? Uh, maybe Caldeer's just looking. Okay. You're going to see more people, though, moving towards that blue side. I like, the, I like the hand hovering, going, what do I need? I know, do? right? <laughs> what, what just got killed there? Is that the one that we, we, we didn't think was going to get scored? Oh, the, yeah, I think so. Yeah, the level up champions one. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So too too late for that one. And it coming out early game, like we said, we thought that that would hit the uh, the you know the broken card zone. Um, we, we just didn't think that it would score. Yeah. It's, when it comes out that early, it's just it's it makes it super, super hard to score. I can't think of any characters that you can bring in there just guns blazing and then take them out. There's too many characters that have higher health so or much have those shields and stuff. Board. Yeah, absolutely. In such a little time, you know, it's yep. only a, what three or four rounds or something like that. It's not. It's not much time to get stuff done while also trying to secure zones and do other things. Like that's a tough one. That's definitely a mid game one you want to see come out. <laughs> And we have Gwen just sitting here in the middle, just doing her thing, like spreading out and making sure that like she can attack all areas of the board. I like that. She does do most of her attacks. Are they condition. indirect attacks or are they direct attacks only? Where she can are they what? Hit, are they direct attacks where she can only fire in a line or can she do indirect attacks where she just has to target within two squares of her? And let me double check. I think Jesse would know more on that one there because I know there's chain lightning, which is just two to three. Which is chain, what was just used. Two to chain three lightning is a powerful away. attack. She she also yeah. has ignite, which is going to be uh, two away, um, mm -hmm. specifically two away, and this is going to give your allies additional attack when uh, when she successfully hits. That's going to so be she's, after damage. She's half and half. She's got two that are direct line of sight ones, and then well, she's got two that are just indirect anywhere around her. Right, but, just but, in hexes around there. I mean, but listen up to this. I mean, flame spear and fireball. Uh, I'll show these two cards real quick. These yeah. cards are the cards. They're going to be doing three damage a piece, and they're going to be long distance. So her position right there in the middle is going to give her so much availability to hit whoever yeah. is vulnerable. Um, Absolutely. It's a perfect position for going to be in. Yeah. She's she's super powerful. And with her teleport, if you can just if you can plan and keep her teleport in your hand for as long as possible, just as a potential reaction when you need to get out of the way. Yes. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think, I, like I said from the very beginning, mm -hmm. she's she's one of, if not my favorite character to play right now. I oh, think yeah. That big thing with the plan is you're either keeping the reactions or you're making sure that you've got multiple attacks from the same character so that you can just do, boom, use your red magic, now, use your blue magic, and just wipe somebody out with multiple hits. Uh, but Kyol can be a good Gwen counter. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's a uh, I think that's reasonable. Uh, Gloryhound, how would you use Kyol to uh, to counter Gwen here? Well, the problem is that that's, they're on the same team. So Gwen and Coleil are on the same team. Oh, are really, they? So yeah. They're not, they're not countering each other. Well, no. then, uh, then it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think that's a fair point because Kyol has a lot of movement and can get in your face mm -hmm. very quickly uh, yeah. and pop in and pop out. Now, I have to point out down here, we've got uh, two, uh, uh, two, two Zhao uh, faces off here. Yes. How, when it comes to the lore and the theme of this, uh, how weird do you think this moment is for these two uh, <laughs> clones of each other uh, facing <laughs> off in the arena? It's like when Link had to fight himself, right? And Link, the, the, yeah, Link so. and then Dark Link. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're That's fighting exactly yourself. It. it would be a little weird. <laughs> uh, hard to see who's on which. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Zooming in is all we can do on here, but absolutely, like we have Sulka, Nevermore, and Suzao on one side, and then Gwen and Kolel and another Suzao on the other right. side. We are at ooh, did we just get our final trophy Holy on here? Cow. I believe we did. Yeah. And did that they, is a win? Did they uh let's see. Yeah, they they secured it. 
I mean, they secured it by, by what? Taking out a few opponents, and then what cards were they able to pull here? What closed the door for this? I'm yeah, looking in here. One right there. This one here have three champions adjacent to the same statue. No, that was that one. Or just has even dinging them on there. Oh, my gosh. How'd that it's happen five, so fast? It's a five to two, it looks like, right? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Look at all this damage, though, on there. That was like... Are they still playing? <laughs> Not sure. Or, uh, maybe finishing the round? Finishing finishing it up, yeah. He always says it's over when one opponent just completely drops. Just no, <laughs> it's, it's the flipping the table. Just, <laughs> just flipping the table. That's unsportsmanlike yeah. conduct. That's minus one cards for next game. <laughs> Yes, physical play when it's safe. I cannot wait for physical play whenever it is safe. Absolutely. I oh, am this is going to huge... be a, a fantastic tournament game. Yes, I'm a oh, huge yeah. fan of tournament games. I love playing in tournaments. I love doing what it, we, I've done, like, X-Wing, Attack Wing, Blood Bowl. So, like, I love doing tournament play in games. And I was excited to have Super Fantasy Brawl here because that I I want to play. No, <laughs> I want to do Glory Hound, when, whenever, whenever it's, we're at a position where we're doing conventions and getting together in person again, I, I think we bring our argument. I, I'm, I'm instigating And bring this. it to the table. I think we bring it to the table. I think, I think when, <laughs> Mythic has a, uh, when Mythic has a full-on tournament mode that is going to be in person at one of these larger conventions down the road in, you know, in, a, in a bit, uh, I think you and I sit down and do a showcase event. That would be fantastic. Do, do like an totally opening, down opening ceremony between the two hosts. <laughs> Lord, that would be man. awesome. Again, I'm sorry, I'm leaving you out of this conversation, buddy. I, you know, you can be my, you can be my support. Like you can get, <laughs> yeah, you can get my little cards, an and then you can put. It, oh, there you go. I'll be the one who puts that stool out there in case you trip. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Mm. <laughs> no, I'll get you water and stuff, oh. and be like, "You got this! You got this! You got this!" Spit, Lord, the, Hawk, the secret is, the secret is, buddy. I'm just scared to play against you. That's fair. Aww. I am definitely the. I'm not as nice as her when we play tournament style games. That's very true. I played like, a lot of Magic seems, the Gathering tournaments, so I'll I'm be like, like, she's like, oh, can I take that back? And I'm like, at home? Yeah. Tournament? No. <laughs> tournament, I'll be like, ooh, looks like you messed up. No, no, no. Like I'm saying the winning portion. Whenever like you win in a tournament, you're like, mm, yeah, like there it is. You know, you like I'm throw stuff, whatever. No, no. I, and then whenever I win, I'm always like, oh, darn. I, I was going to say, one. Kat, I, I think you would beat me and then be very nice about it, which would sting yes. a little bit more. <laughs> yes, that's exactly yeah, it actually how I do it. More. <laughs> So Mythic yeah. said down here, uh, I will post up those 16 players that move on to the next round. But since we didn't have them uh, register their teams, okay. I won't be able that's to include fair. that information. Okay. okay. So that's that's one of those things that I think will be interesting to gather as we uh, as we keep moving on in this tournament. So I, well, um, I think what we should do is the very last weekend, right? When we're all back together again, the third weekend, maybe yeah. we can just actually write it down ourselves and see like what the teams are playing. At least the ones that we could capture. The finals on those. Well, yep. and hopefully... Other people who have played went ahead. They can go and comment on that, and then leave sure. commentary on what they went ahead and added to that, or what their teams were, because that I would think, be really awesome. I think we'll see a lot of comments. On, I mean, because the people who are victors, they're going to want to be engaging anyway. Uh, I think. I think if we put in that post to leave their teams down below or something, we'll probably see some good commentary. Absolutely, because I would be really curious to see how everybody's games went. Yeah, especially with that. as it yeah. kind of whittles down to like the last couple games, where you're like, okay, what is everybody fighting against each other, and what have they been successful with? Absolutely. It's safe, everyone. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no matter Everything how you is... say that, it always sounds bad. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. You are. It doesn't matter what it's you're safe. saying. Totally trust me. I could be it's baking fine. you cookies and be like, it's safe, everyone. Trust me. <laughs> I'm just I'm just showing off more miniatures while we have a moment here. Because that pose is epic. I know. The miniatures are so well-crafted. They look so good. I don't know which one I want to paint first, though. Please do gather the stats announcers, even if manually. I've been running stats on my own practice games. So very interested. Uh, Dangle, what, what, are some of the, what are some of the things you've, you've discovered? What team are you currently running that you think uh, has a lot of synergy together? 
um, I'd be interested to hear if you've been keeping track of, uh, of your own plays. I'd love, I'd love some of that information. Absolutely. I think that's when the community really gets involved. And then you get people going, well, I played X amount of games with these characters and these ones do really well. And like, there's nothing better than having that community support of seeing everything on a massive scale and getting all that data and information into one place yep. and being able to determine how you're going to play, what you're going to play with and why you're going to play with it because of what it's good at and it, if it's consistent or not. There like, are some forum yep. threads on BGG where people are talking about strengths of heroes and what people think are like the better ranked heroes. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I've dug into a few of those BGG threads. So um, I'm, I'm interested. That's why I was interested to see what teams we see match up here. Cause I know people are paying attention to it. So let's see who we have here. This is another, another tournament that's in the middle. Yes, it, it is. is. So I'm looking for their information. This is new Dodge and Etima Fur. And they're running the Zhao again, and then we've got Korvash and Taze, oh, which I'm a huge the, fan of Taze. I'm glad we're seeing this battle. Isn't this the one that, that uh, wasn't quite up and running this morning? No, they did. I think Noob Dodge must have been declared the winner. Okay, cool, cool. But I like that we're seeing Taze. I really enjoy Taze. I think he's a very maneuverable character, and he's got some of those really good finishing blows that like ignore armor and just does a bunch of damage. Nice. He's really good for like that last-minute kill. He's one I have not utilized Taze very much. Let's see, so we got okay, so we have side. David here as... Is this a double team match? This is. Yeah, oh we gosh. got Blaine over here, too. And Nevermore again. And, and then Taze. But they've got three trophies on this side already. Colin Never, as Noob. Yep, Nevermore, Nevermore is becoming a consistent figure in a lot of these teams we're seeing right now. Yeah. Maybe one of the most, maybe one of the most valuable positioning and support characters on the board. There's a lot of really good things. When you can swoop through somebody so you don't have to worry about like opponents or statues yeah. or traps being in your way and then and then make people fear and run away from you after that, if you do it right, you can basically use it as a way to push your opponents out of the spots they want to be in and you don't have to worry about anything, which is really nice. Oh, this what is we, an interesting one here. Have, have a here champion. Here. Have a champion adjacent to each statue, which is an interesting yeah. one because that breaks up your group with that, you know? Yep. You're controlling the red area and have two or more champions adjacent to the blue as you're as a coming up. Which they don't have anybody over there right yeah, now. Yeah, I was going to say, how many people do we even have out here? Oh, my goodness. It's okay. all bunched up in this corner. Oh, yeah. Those are going to be some tough challenges to take I, care of. I might ignore that every statue requirement and start trying to position for those two colored ones because you can group a little bit closer and, and hopefully secure some ground. Yeah. But it is one of those things. So they got Gwen knocked out right now. So do they go all in and just mm. keep trying to pound on them when they've got most of their characters knocked out and try to just get those wins that way? Or do they like try to go reposition? I know overall that I've not seen many wins come off of... Well, I haven't seen any wins, I know, with the ones that we've played where just basically hammering into people. Like, it's yeah. usually like that last trophy that you need, you're like, quickly, now I'm going to gank that one character <laughs> get the last trophy. Yeah. Like, that's just, what I'm going to do. <laughs> just a single dagger under the ribs. That's yeah. right. Oops. Oh, gosh. That Try just fell in your direction. <laughs> oh, no. Did I, I swear I did you in the back? My oh, bad. no. That, was, well, that wasn't supposed to go there? Dang. I keep on moving like two mouses now because I have them next to each other. Yeah. So I'm like messing myself <laughs> <laughs> it's the level of control. She doesn't want me to have the mouse oh, anymore. The control. I've been demoted. <laughs> Hard Dangle to judge again. synergies. Yes, except for anecdotally from the, my numbers, the most yep. raw, winningest individual heroes in my games are turning out to be Gwen and Korvash. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. okay. Gwen is Gwen really is good. Not I'm just Gwen's good. Yeah. But there is one of those things where you have to pick a team that works well with you. And I find that Tay's being able to dash a lot, especially as a reaction is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gwen is not is not a surprise on that list. Like I said, there's a few yeah. characters we've seen popping up over and over again, not only in my personal play, but, but here on the table. Corvash is one we have not seen utilized much, though. We were talking about that earlier. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. I'm like, I'm picking and up And I was Corvashes. surprised that we're seeing so much Zhu Zhao now because we didn't see any the first rounds. Right, right. Yep. And right. now it seems all of a sudden like, oh, every team's got one, so... Corvash is going to be doing a lot thought. of... Uh, has the potential to do a, a big area of effect attack. Uh, and then some significant damage. I mean, another another bruiser with a little bit of range. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Which that's always important, too. I typically try to have somebody that's like a melee, a range, and then somebody that can do a little bit of support, I mean, right? 
Chop here is going to be his most uh, his most significant ability. You know, each each deck kind of has a uh, one yeah. one card that kind of sets the tone for them. This one here is going to be able to gain uh, plus two damage for each target, and it, it's a full circle, a full ring. Um, so if you're able to get two people in your zone, that's a lot of damage going through. The hard part, I think, with him is going to be uh, maneuvering around the board uh, in a way that gets you into a position like that. You're going to need some support characters helping you shift around. Oh, that's interesting. You know, I never play, what is it, Gwen together with, who was, who was I just talk, looking at here? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Never mind. I forgot what I said. I usually play Gwen with, like, characters that just fight up close because yep. she's so much further back. But I've never thought of playing her with other characters that also play further back. That makes any sense you know what i'm saying yeah because yeah. no, like, I, I already have the one character in the back and i figure okay well they're kind of maneuverable they can go here and there and then attack from far away but having like two further back then like doesn't all the the focus just go on the one character that's left there i could see standing in the middle <laughs> i could see a strategy though but going with like a gwayne and like say someone like a derman who's all about the traps and range and like a sulka yeah. where you just stay away but you're just blasting people basically so you you keep control by just killing their characters that are trying to take control. Hmm. You could definitely go with that type of strategy. If they're all if they all do enough damage from range, you never have to be face to face with them. Which can negate some teams if they go heavy with you know the melee characters. So Having... just just secured another trophy here. Yeah, now it's uh... two three. Knocked out, uh, knocked out Nevermore there. Man, it can change so quickly. Because I was just about ready to say, oh, man, they have, like, a really good lead with three trophies. I mean, they only really need to score one of those challenge cards on here. And then yeah, they're in a that's... good position for controlling the red zone, though. Yeah, that is true. Wow. It is always interesting. Once somebody gets that three trophy range, you're just like, oh, man, I can't let them get one of the one of those. Right. Cards. Then it's you're like a fight to the death on anything. It's like if you even get near any of these goals, like it's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> What's our uh, trophies for over here? Like what are our different challenges that are going to be moving over? Well, and the challenge, the challenge starts to become once you're in that in that, you know, two away from the victory position. The challenge becomes determining if you're on your heels or not. Are you playing defensive or playing aggressive? And if right. you're playing defensive, that's when you need to start switching up your game. You've got to get the other person to a defensive position because they're going to be able to, if, if you're, if they're paying, playing more aggressive, the odds are, unless you take them out, they're going to be able to secure those trophies before you. Right. And it looks like having a character next, next to each statue and then having the red area are going to be the things that are scoring you two trophies here very soon. Yep. This so is, now would be the time to set those up. And it's being like, it's, Obviously, becoming a rush to this red area here. Well, that's filled with traps and everything. Gwen's got her teleport. If she's able to do a teleport four, she can pop right next to that blue that blue statue. Uh, there is a good opportunity here for her to her to kind of pull a surprise maneuver. It just depends on the card draw. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, keep moving the wrong like. Ah, it's fine. Here. Wow. <laughs> you should get Jesse's mic and use his mic too, or his uh. I know. I keep moving the his mouse. Wrong mouse. I'm gonna get Jesse's mouse in here. I'm gonna get everybody's mouse in here. I'm gonna control everything. <laughs> Works for me. I've got I've got these. I've got one of these weird little uh, Apple mouses that don't have any buttons or keys or, you know, you put it in your oh. hand. And you're like, how am I supposed to use this? You know what? That messed me up. So I only use PCs, and whenever I first sat in front of one of those, like, because they're new and like they had, my dad actually had the pad that's like flat and everything that's okay. used as the mouse i was like how do i operate this thing i'm like i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> he's like no, no no it's just like this i'm like oh this is weird this is weird i need my i need my mouse my regular mouse it has clicky things on it it's all good <laughs> so let's see here as far as as far as the board lay, layout goes uh i'm trying to keep an eye on on our teams we've got we've got both of the uh the taz uh right up there against the red statue gwen like i said can pop into the blue Nevermore still off the board though, and uh, yeah, and the opposite player is defending that that yellow statue pretty significantly. Um, I can see a shot where where uh, Gwen actually pops over into yellow, and Nevermore tries to secure blue. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. And Nevermore it's going to is a good on what what comes into their hand. Nevermore is a good character to do that with because he does have some cards where he can do some really good movement. He can get get over there in time if needed. 
But it's I, still a matter of getting them off the board and getting them there, you know? My sense right now is that the the player who has Gwen and Nevermore on their team, I think they're probably playing defensive at the moment. They just got both characters knocked out. They're spawning back onto the board. Uh, and and the opposite player has a lot of secure uh, security on that red zone. Yeah, my I think it's going to get the red is, zone. My concern is I would almost give up those two trophies knowing that that won't be victory. Uh, and try to position myself to score to score that uh, right. beside both statues. You've got to not play defensive in this moment. Exactly, and it, because you don't want, you're not going for something to take it over. You're just trying yep. to get the win. So you've you got to work for those. Let them get those two trophies. Exactly. They're not going to get the win. Go for something else and then get the win. You know, because they're occupied with something else. Like, try to, ooh, oh, okay, and a moving, over okay. moving over there, moving over there. Uh, like they what, were listening. We're, what we're talking about <laughs> might be well. I do. I do. Listen. I do have uh, 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 Ether on uh, on call. By the way, so <laughs> the only problem is I'm not sure which Taz just moved. Oh yeah, that's tough. I'll have to. <laughs> I'll have to go on the overhead screen here. Let me see if I can see which one is on which ring. I'm not for sure. I don't see any rings around them on this. No, I, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not sure that they have signifiers here on Tabletopia um, to to let us know. They, of course, as players, are, are fully aware of where they're positioned. Yeah, but, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure that we're going to have a good insight into that. And it does make that a little bit difficult, especially when they're playing mirror match style characters. You're like, uh, which one is theirs? <laughs> I just oh, want to I'm do in... a, a full Taz team. Can I buy three copies of this game and just run the same character three times? I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, unless I, I hear unless I hear official word from Mythic, works. I think it. I think as long as I own three co uh, three cores, I'm allowed to play whatever totally characters fine. I want. Yeah. <laughs> Mythic. The trick would be if you had me? three cores, where would you store them all? Because that's like the box is so big. Oh, that's true. That's true. That would be tough. That's a lot of storage. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I would, I would, I would probably, I'd probably take two of the cores out. I'd leave one box immaculately displayed on a shelf, and then I'd, uh, I'd Aww. stack all my game trays like tucked, tucked away in, uh, in the corners of one of my bookshelves. I think that'd be my <laughs> strategy for it. There you go. <laughs> that is, that always does become kind of the problem as you get a bigger collection. Is figuring oh. that out, like what to do with all of your games. Mine just extend onto the floor. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I try to make rules like we won't fill up another calyx, but the next thing you know, we're buying another calyx. Here's here's the thing. So one of my one of my friends, Sean, who is a a, a weekly player with me, You've seen him on the channel. If anyone follows Quackalope, he came over the other day. I not only sent him and Max home with games all the time. Yesterday, I sent him home. He has a family of six, right? So yesterday, I sent him home with a 3ds and a PlayStation 4 Pro that haven't been touched in probably a year and a half. Uh, so I'm just getting rid of stuff at this point. If you want anything yeah. I own, I have so many board games coming in. Everything else has got to go. Uh, can I have uh, your YouTube channel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he needs that. I think oh, he needs that. Oh, yeah. Okay, Not just you. anything, doctor. You know, Jeez. I got to be honest, anything though. I own. <laughs> if, I gave, if I gave Glory Hog my YouTube channel, I'd probably do, get less board games. <laughs> he would do really That's bad true. things with it. You don't want to do that, okay? Uh, okay. That's fair. I, <laughs> listen, I'm it. open to a discussion as long as you stay as loyal to ducks as I am, which means you are going to have to adopt some. Adopt some ducks? Well, actually, you know what? My boss, Noah, with Game Trays, has ducks. He's got yeah, like five or I six mean, ducks. I mean, I appreciate that your boss has them. That's not you having them. <laughs> well, I'm assuming that I could probably get a duck is what I'm saying. He that said you he could would find send me duck? one. Because apparently you can mail ducks in the mail, which is not something I was aware of. Oh, that yeah. You can so mail a duck on over? A lot, of, a lot of foul creatures can actually be mailed in the mail. So so here's yeah. the thing. Uh, from, a, from a point of being hatched to the point where they actually need to be uh, consuming food and water, there's about a 24-hour cycle. And because our post office system... Uh, is established has established itself in a way to really cater towards rural and farming farming America. Mm -hmm. uh, you can order ducks, chickens, a lot of other uh, fowl fowl kind of farm animals uh, through post. So they'll hatch uh, and then they'll do a a day a what one day delivery, uh, making sure they stay warm and safe and secure, and they will arrive on your doorstep. That's that is so the craziest crazy. thing ever. That it's I, I had no cool. idea. I was it's like, oh part my of gosh. The, it, it was actually part of the infrastructure that was built into our post system to, yeah. to allow support into those rural America. Well, that's what everybody always kind of forgets is that once you move outside of the cities, there is no UPS yes. and Amazon yes. and FedEx. It's all, it's almost always the U.S. Postal Service taking that 
Amazon package and then doing the rest of the delivery to those. Really it's it's really cute because they'll they'll just be a box of peeps showing up. Like you'll <laughs> you'll hear it because because they just they show up at your doorstep. The postman makes sure you sign for them. And you just hear this box full of echoing peeps. My grandfather's ordered a lot of chickens that way. Like if cool. you if you get a duck, I feel like it's mandatory that you have to like have a duck bath like you sit in a little bath and you have little ducks oh. around and stuff like you I, have to do that right listen glory glory hound my five-year plan does a hundred percent involve owning a pond with some ducks a like there's no way ducks. there's no way my channel doesn't start to transition to just being a nature documentary uh, <laughs> just ducks all ducks all, I'm ducks, not all the time 24 hour what ducks. you do is you set up one of those wildlife cam things right you set it up so whenever you're not playing games the whole rest of the time it's just your ducks frolicking around Aww. i love it and here's the thing i'd probably get more views probably, you, probably. that's actually probably <laughs> that's, a fact. that's something we've discussed like the people who do um just more general mainstream things you know like we think of somebody like a big channel you're like oh that channel's got fifty thousand subscribers that's a big board game youtube channel and then you go look at someone who does hair stuff and it's like Five million subscribers. And you're like, yeah. cool, 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 cool. But here's You'd be the, like, here's how the can we get thing. board games into your hair? <laughs> you exciting well, that's one of the questions that we're trying to ask, and I think collaborating and working with more, you know, diverse co content creators is part of that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but but one of the things for me is I think our industry is just getting started. Right. I'm super excited to see. Uh, I mean, games like this, tournaments like this that are happening. Our, yes. our industry over the last 15 years, 20 years has expanded and developed alongside the video game dev, dev side uh, in a really cool way. So, you know, if you're here, if you're listening, if you're paying attention, you're on the leading edge of this. Trust me. Well, just as it is, having the ability to get on here and go on Tabletopia and watch yeah. these tournaments awesome. and be able to play in these tournaments or be able to play games online and stuff like that has been so helpful. And it's so fun to see that cross and its availability to people being able to play with people across the world, you know? I think like, that's a well, really big thing during COVID. Like, since we already had the YouTube channel beforehand and we were doing board game stuff, we just increased it. We were like, okay, we're doing one thing a week. And then we were like, okay, I guess we're going to do three times a week now because people are just like looking for things to do. And when you're trapped in your house and being I able mean, to show them like this, the convention you did for the convention we ran. Really big. It was it was hashtag screw loneliness because you don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, like that was our that was our motto. It it the the whole idea was uh, we have an industry that requires and invests in these personal relationships, and we're here because we I think desperately need them, uh, yeah. and they're not gone just because the world's shifted a little bit for for the last few months, right? Um, so just like Absolutely. we're doing here, running a tournament, live streaming, talking about it, uh, there's other ways to connect. Gloryhound, you do live streams every single week. Uh, connecting with your fan base. We have a discord over, over, you know, uh, that we have mm -hmm. daily games with, uh, with the paddle members. So there's a lot of good ways to get connected to the people you care about. Absolutely. And this, I'm like, I'm so excited because tabletop sim and tabletopia were underutilized, I think. And then think now this year they're being used so much more. You can see that more funding has been put into them. More companies are putting more games out on them, which is so amazing, especially because we love talking about Kickstarters well, and I stuff. Think, and that's huge being able to try these games out before you actually go ahead and buy them, like with this, like with Super Fantasy Brawl and stuff. If you're looking at this tournament and you're going, oh man, this looks like so oh, much fun, oh, but I don't oh, know oh. if I want to get it. You can try Gwen it ahead just of time. It in. <laughs> yeah. Gwen, just, Gwen just moved in. Do they have a card that does significant amount of damage? This could be game. Like, I know it's super close right them. now. They just got to kill one other character. Oh! I saw that card go down, and I was like, "Teleports <laughs> being activated." Let's see what they have in store. See, Battle Cry says we can make furniture out of board games. I want the board game throne with all the board games, and then you like sit on like the little board game throne. That's the furniture I'm going for. <laughs> I think with the way Battlecry keeps tricking everybody in, into going premium, that there'll be a lot more investment into this. A lot more investment yeah, in the tabletopia. Sylvia, <laughs> hello, hello. Thanks for being here. Super excited to have you. Absolutely. Oh, like, they're I just doing keep math. on waiting. I see this hand moving. They're I know. doing math. They've, they're trying to figure it out. Yeah. I keep on waiting for like this final blow to happen. Like, are we, are we going to get some trophies from one of the cards All here? Right. Are we going to keep being activated. out? What are we dropping? Because you don't move in that you don't move into a vulnerable position like that if you don't have something right. up your sleeve. What do we do there? Okay, Tor, and this is going to be uh, Taz or Ally may dash two. Okay. 
So positioning. Which is huge, being able to have one of your allies dash. You normally can't. You think he's going for, uh, you think they're going for uh, uh, on the side of every... Uh, one of each, yeah, maybe. It's so close to being cycled, though, if it's not already. I think no. it's gone. I think it's yeah. gone. That one's going to... That there, one's going to cycle. Yeah. Huh. What are they doing? I wish I could just like oh, tune go. in and good. hear them mumbling under their breath. I know, right? <laughs> okay, so they're they're definitely <laughs> shutting down red. That was that was where that teleport came into play, making okay. sure they didn't have the game there, but they're securing their opponent from being able to actually claim uh, that red on the top of their turn. Because when it was positioned the other way, yep. um, that would have been victory for the the orange player there. Yeah, I was gonna say because anybody's game right here, we just need one trophy here or two over two. there, and then that's and that game. Is, like that is one cycle. Right, you can't let them get though that red area there. Question is, how do they respond? Do they move over into blue, try to hold that down a little bit? I mean, that's another two trophy card there, you yeah. know? And they'll have that yeah. for an entire cycle. Everybody's I, right there. There's the so most, many characters in that one spot. <laughs> what's our health at right now? Who's the most vulnerable in this position? Uh, looks like we got four health over here, or yeah, four damage over here. Okay, but that out of nine, you got five left. That's I mean, you're not yeah. too vulnerable. And then over oh, here, yeah. we just got another two. No like, one's too weak. We're no, not going to see characters yeah. get knocked out right now. Which no. is what I was thinking was going to happen to seal the deal. No, uh -huh. this is going to have. You're going to have to take a challenge card. You're going to have to take one of the cards to make this happen. Or use like all three of your magics to go ahead and do like try to cards. just. Yeah, but that's a risky think, play though because if they have a reaction card, exactly. it's just risky at that point. And at this point in the game, you can't be risky because oh, you it's can. anybody's game. Well, you can be risky, but I would not be risky. Okay, <laughs> that's not my jam. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd immediately try to spread after this. I'd be looking at the next card that's cycling down. We've got that blue. I, I believe that's have two characters next to uh, next to that blue statue there. Um, I'd just try to step over to the side and uh, and see if I can secure that at the top of the next round. Maybe get all three next to it if I, if I have the uh, maneuverability to do so. Especially with so many characters being in one place at one time. You know you're just leaving yourself open uh -huh. to all sorts of plays with getting, like, hit or push heavy or... damage there that just came through though that's five total out of uh which character is that over there oh way over here yep which one which one how much health do we have that's, that's uh taz. taz all right i mean yeah. five out of nine you still got four health you're probably still in a pretty safe position and he does have that reaction card that gives him armor too and lets him dash. This is down to the line here. This is an intense game. Let's yeah, change it to a different one. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would be. I would genuinely oh, be a little oh, frustrated. Oh, someone just got knocked out. <laughs> Did they really? Oh, Taz just got knocked out. They just pulled them off. Oh. There it is. There's a fourth oh, one. Now it's four no. four. They did. They I were able did to take not, them out. I did not see that happening. It was only what, four damage. What card, what card did they cards? pull? Yeah, what card did they pull to do that damage? Let's say you Let's have see. all the money. <laughs> She's like looking at me like, are you going to scroll oh, around? Like, you where took is it at? I don't see it out. Right up here. Well, she, she has it. Okay, there we go. Mouse? Did you take my mouse as well? For real. There we go. Yeah, I'm taking everybody's mice. All right. Yeah, I'm see, there's two damage, the there's two damage, there's a pull. Two damage, must not there's have had a block. Bloodied, does extra damage, sap strength. And just a perfect combination there with two of the characters that had some uh, some damage available. And they're going to be getting extra damage on this and stuff, so... Man. Nice. Good for them. Yeah, for I real. I did not see someone getting knocked out. Me neither. Oh, did somebody get a... Ch oh, no, that's they're just changing it up. I was like, oh my gosh, right. did somebody get a challenge? But take a look at them now. now and, well, I basically, they score any challenge now, they'll win. But it's, yeah, which is important, though, because it is four. They have four people in there, and I don't think anybody has control of the red right now. No, perfectly tied on the red at the moment. That'll cycle yeah. through. But that's have already cycling through, yeah. Through. So that was really good, because they were able to kill a character, which made them lose the other player, lose control, plus get a trophy. Uh, I think the most likely now are going to be probably that three adjacent to the same statue. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, because you only have both teams. Everybody's just move clustered one up over there. anyway over there. Yeah, that or we, just, saw, do we see someone potentially step over to blue. I mean, that's 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 the play I would have probably tried to make if I was if I was in this. Are you trying to say you do the sneaky play and just scoot yourself on over to blue at the last minute? <laughs> I like I like trying to hold position if I can. It, it can be at times hard to you know if you have the right characters, it's hard to to maneuver people away. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I like being in a position where it's up to my opponent to move me, basically, because yes. then they can fail if they don't have the right card. Yep. And if you're in our chat today, make sure to go ahead and say hello. We're here to talk to all of you out there. And let us know what your favorite character to oh, play is. If you we play have a chat. I was just watching a game. <laughs> I know. I, I was getting intense in the game, too. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of want to know what all of our viewers, like, yeah. like what their favorite combinations are favorite, as favorite well. My favorite one is the yellow one. So I think they're talking about Just Jessie. the yellow one? Jesse's their favorite just character. the quackalo. <laughs> you just put the duck out there on the hex. <laughs> Listen, I am super excited for the uh, the expansions that are coming out. That quackalo, uh, uh, you know, I'm... Look... I really appreciate Mythic Games being willing to put, put a quackalope into their into their title. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hello, Tico. How are you doing? Yeah, I think that's going to happen, Jesse. I think it's going to happen for you. I think if I pretend it did, oh. one of the characters oh. went offline. Now, see, this is why we uh, we should have switched over right here at this key pivotal moment <laughs> of everything no, it's happening. Too, wait, it's too close to have <laughs> someone go offline. Glory Hound, yeah, jump in, is... finish the game. <laughs> I got this. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I know I would be freaked out. There's nothing worse than being in a tournament and then like you like you have computer issues. Oh my goodness, right? I would be so There's, upset. I mean, I'd be like, the oh, only thing God. that makes me more nervous than that is being on a live stream for four hours straight and needing to not have computer issues. That's you know <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? That's no sweat. No sweat. I don't worry about no. that at all. Yeah. Life streams, life streams are the perpetual pressure of like, when is something I don't control going to go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I've found, I found that you just kind of have to roll with it because stuff does go wrong and it's kind of, you kind of just have to expect it with live stuff. Like something will happen. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend praying and leaving a little food okay. out. Oh yeah. You do yeah. do your offerings to the PC gods. Like mm -hmm. in the beginning, like when you had your Nintendo and you would like blow into like the little cartridge and then does you'd that, like click it that, up and down. That works time. though, doesn't it? It does, but you always have to do it, and you never talk bad about the Nintendo because Nintendo knows. No. Okay, yeah. 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 As soon as you talk bad, it stops working. <laughs> I've heard that. Oh, uh, it's just like what is it? The Xbox exactly two years. You know, once it gets to its warranty, it's like three days after you will shall get your red ring. Okay. I <laughs> I do not trust warranties. Wait for the results. Four four. Okay, so four points and four points. So it was a draw on that. So oh, yeah, it was a draw because they are timed at an hour on that. So oh, that dropout, that dropout tied it. What a good game, though, man! I feel bad. Such for, a I good feel game. Bad that, that internet connection got in the way there. I know because like they were really trying to edge out that last win, yep. so that's going to cost them end points on that in their rankings, like. Oh my goodness, that was an intense round. <laughs> that was so, so intense. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they end up going with that. Oh, Battle Cry says, a phone call interrupted the modem. Ah, oh, back in the day, back in the day. Oh. <laughs> I remember playing Bugdom when I was like eight, uh, which was this, I don't know if y'all remember Bugdom, but it was all the rage when I was in middle school. And I would get... <laughs> I would I would have to coordinate around uh, around dial up uh, you know shutting down when I when I wanted to play my video game. Yep, I would download stuff on the internet except like I would let it go all night, so I'd wait until everybody was sleeping, and I'd be like, <laughs> "All right, I'm gonna download this video so I can watch it. I'm gonna leave it off all night." <laughs> so I would I would I would log in, set it up, and then go all night, so you wouldn't you know you wouldn't have that interruption of the phone yeah. line and everything. I'm so glad we don't have to do that now, and like it's lightning fast wait. download speeds. You don't because have to do holy that. crap. Oh. Oh. I have, told, Kentucky, I have told so. everyone here not to get on the phone this entire time. I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, that is awkward. That is awkward. We make our kid get on Fortnite <laughs> sometimes. Here's, like, here's, get here's Fortnite. the worst thing. It's Sarah's birthday, and I've told her she can't talk to anyone. Well. Aww. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's see here. And this is another finished match. So it doesn't look like we have any more live matches going right now. Have a good one. Have a good one, Phantom of Truth. Did you get us another matchup? No, this is a, one of the finished ones one that we were watching before. One of the finished ones on there, okay. Doesn't look like there's another live one going right well, now. Well, it is getting down to our, our they time sh here. They, yeah, should so they should be, be most up. of them should be wrapping up at this point, I think. So, as far as, like, the takeaways from everything that we've seen here today. I mean, clearly Gwen's the, uh, Gwen's the most valuable character you can have on your team. And the VIP I of said today. from the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting in round two how we started seeing so much Zhu Zhao like that. Like we didn't see him at all, and then all of a sudden it was like, okay, now that people are pairing up again, he started showing up all over the place. Yeah, Zhu Zhao is a character that I actually have not played a whole lot with. I, I have to say, I probably stick to the darker looking character. Yeah, <laughs> for I'll, some reason. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you the two big takeaways I've I've garnered, and I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear your perceptions of this too. The, the two things and that I've, I've noticed. I really. Oh, and the chat for sure. Yeah. I really liked the combination play. Uh, we we chatted about setting up um, Marisu or Maris, Maris's, uh yes. to trigger that special ability. Yep. I haven't mm -hmm. I haven't yet personally built a deck around the idea of positioning someone to activate their special power. I like that strategy. I think that can yeah. be a really, a really interesting way to approach the game. And the other thing is, uh, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think we've seen a lot more payoff from maneuverable uh, and ranged characters yes. uh, on the board, then we have a uh, full brute force attack. Now, Doug Run and uh, Doug Run and I think it was Goldar had a nice combination there for, for a 5-0 victory, but I think that's the only one that we saw that was really a hold your ground, be a bruiser. Everything else has been much more nimble. Oh, think, absolutely. Because so. yeah, you can position yourself in a way where like your opponent can't even touch you, and that yeah. I think is almost more valuable than anything. This game really is, on its surface, you think, oh, I'm just going to go there and beat somebody up like you would like in an unmatched game or something like that. Yep. But in reality, it's all about maneuverability, yeah. moving, pushing your opponent, because you have to hold the line through your whole turn and to get through their turn. So you basically, you're just trying to be like, oh, you're about to score? Push them out. Now I'm about to score. And there's a lot of tug and pull that you don't normally see in a lot of these types of games. Absolutely. I think that... We're really like Su Zhao having him come up so often and everything and mm -hmm. me wanting to revisit that and everything. I've definitely seen some characters that I'm like, all right, I need to make sure that I'm trying these characters, some of these characters out and playing with them in different combinations and everything. Yeah. Because whereas I thought those were not super like st strong characters before, now I'm seeing, okay, maybe if I can use them in this sort of combination, like they're just sure. going to be better, you know? I know for me, Dwayne and then Sulka and Maruts. I love the little tiger, the little Maroos guy. He is one of my favorite characters to play with, but it's more of that maneuverability and then like mm -hmm. turn and burn sort of thing. Like I know he's going to die. I know he's going to get out there. He's probably going to die multiple times, but he's cannon fodder. And then I have maneuverability in my other characters with that and lots of long range stuff. And see, like Taze is, I think, my favorite. He's been in every match I've played because I just mm -hmm. love that he can dash. He can do those killing blows if he needs to. And he still has nine hit points. And it was good to see that play out in that, you know? Not just in my stuff, but in other people's stuff too. So at least I know I'm doing something right. <laughs> and some of the some of the characters we haven't seen utilized yet. We I don't believe we see we saw Darren utilized. I don't think yeah. we saw Ark Arquette utilized. Um, right. Maybe only one utilization of Wrath out here on the board. Just one, uh, that's all I saw. So there's definitely some characters, and I don't know if it's uh, if the art doesn't appeal to people, so they don't grab them as quickly, or if it's actually the uh, the strategic abilities. I, I want to dig into those and see what type of team I might build around those characters that we haven't seen on the table. Which Daru is really interesting with all the different trap plays, and then Wrath is the Wrath that burrows, and I th I always thought that that was really good to be able yeah. to to burrow, pop up, do a bunch of damage, and then and then leave. Get back like, out. He does. Yeah. He comes in. Does damage and leaves, and that could be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Are there characters that we didn't see a lot of play with? Like, what ones do we think that we're missing? Like, Ar Arquette, we haven't seen any play with. Oh, yeah, that's right. Arquette, that's yeah, right. Yeah, we didn't see them at all. That's right. Which is a little frustrating given the state of the bird, you know, representation in this game, honestly. Mm hmm. Okay, uh, it says about, about four or five minutes for the next round to begin matchups coming soon. Thank you so much, Mythic, on that for the update. Fantastic. Yeah, I really... confirmation on that Quackalope promo, though. I mean, <laughs> none. 
And I think, I got to be honest, I could see a hog and a hound in here as well. There you go. Oh, I would be an awesome I have hound. a feeling it'll be like some type of werewolf character riding on a war pig. <laughs> oh my God, I'm that so would be in so for that. amazing. I'm so in for that. <gasps> that would be so amazing. I would totally be down for that as well. <laughs> what sort of, uh, what sort of, what's, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm thinking heavy maneuverability uh, and heavy defense. Not a lot of, like, not a bruiser. But just, yeah. You know, you can, and maybe, maybe instead of doing heavy damage, your your war hog or war hound, whatever it is, can actually shift and push people out of the way as if the hog's just Oh, that would be through. awesome. Just, um, just going well, through and bumping people. One of my strongest people. personal maneuvers is just being big and bumping into people. That's so, right. That's, I think that's fair. I think well, that is a viable strategy. Fair. It's very helpful when you're wandering I'm not a convention that. floor. That's it. I'm, I'm not going anywhere near that one. <laughs> It's, it is useful, though. She does follow behind me at conventions. It, people it get is. out of my way. Yeah, it's like a line. they don't get out of her way. She's so short. My, mm -hmm. my theory, my theory in, in groups like that is just if you look forward, don't make eye contact, and walk confidently, most of the time you'll make it through. Okay. Most of the time. You say some... that. You say that. <laughs> when you're at like a head level, sometimes there's a lot of tall people at conventions for some reason, or maybe oh, I'm, I'm just only, really short. I'm only five, six. I mean... <laughs> It's a sea of backpacks. I'm like, I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I hold Jan's hand and I let him weed through Aww. the crowd in front of me. Just by the pinky finger, though, because it's more cute. That's cute. Aww, that is cute. BFFs. <laughs> Does he carry you on his shoulder sometimes so that you can see above the crowd? I He hasn't yet, but I hope that's something that would be a dream come true. I I'll love, you I what, love I'm that I'm in beckoning. You know, there's there's this weird culture in in my uh, in my community of of uh, people shipping Jan and I together, and I'm just infecting your stream with it at this point. You know, we're just carrying oh, it fine. forward. All right, so I'm talking to Mythic Games right now, and it says that they will be posting the rankings and the 16 that are moving it to the next round on Facebook later. So okay. they still have a round that they're setting up here in about four to five minutes. And if you guys are interested, any of you out there are interested in watching those on your own, you can go to Tabletopia and you can actually go ahead and click on there. You can type in Super Fantasy Brawl and see some of the games that they have there. And you mm -hmm. can actually spectate on those on your own. But once everything is finished, they will be posting all of the rankings. If anybody is watching that knows anybody playing in those, let them know that we would love to see their comments on what they were using, their thoughts on going into some of those. Definitely. Like, I'd really love to see some more information on those and our community commenting on that. That would be really fantastic. And then I will be posting the next few tournaments. We're going to be doing two more tournament weekends. Really excited about it. We're going to be with Quackalope Games talking about this. So... It's with his be, better half. Well, with his better half next so, week. So Jan's going to be here next week. I'm going to be in for the finale. Uh, you know, Quackalope, like, mm -hmm. we, we're going we're gonna to have a good time. Jan is much more analytical than me, so I'm interested to see how he approaches... Uh, In-depth analytics on everything. Yeah. Has he ever won this game? That's what I really <laughs> no, know. No, he understands the strategy of it. He's never once won a, won a game, I think. Mm. Analytics that, only get you so right? far. He's yelling Maybe. at me from, from across the room. You have to have the hard under cards. Yeah, you, Jen, you, just right card. you just don't have the heart of the cards, buddy. <laughs> That's it. You have to have the heart of the cards. Well, and make sure to like and subscribe to everybody. And if you're on YouTube, ring the bell because whenever Mythic Games goes live, then you're going to know whenever the next tournaments start and everything. And we'll have more commentary for all of you out there and everything. So, Quacklope, do you want to go ahead and give everybody your information on where to find you at? If you search Quackalope in Google, <laughs> you will find. So we're the only. I mean, it's it's weird that a a historical and uh, and still in existence uh, biological creature that is in mm -hmm. almost every mm -hmm. single orn ornithological study possible uh, yeah. does not have more presence when it comes to online you know communities. But mm -hmm. if you just Google search Quackalope, you'll find our YouTube, our Facebook, our Discord, anything you want to connect with us at. Uh, that's usually the best way. Uh, Fantastic. We're working, we're working on that duck hashtag. We'll get there one day. Oh, so that you have the fantastic. opposite problem we have. So there's a glory hound band with just one D at the end. Make sure you so add we, the two Ds because <laughs> you don't I, want to go to the band. <laughs> I'll tune you into the real problem I have. The reason we operate is like Quackalope and not Jesse Anderson is because Jesse Anderson, Heart of the Cards, is a blue-haired Yu-Gi-Oh character. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> I swear, search the reason my the reason my name is always Jesse Samuel Anderson is both because I love my grandfather 
named after him. And because I can't compete with Yu-Gi-Oh! I just can't. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. You can't. See, my only hope is that one day that I'll overtake the Glory Hound Band. And Do instead it. of Glory Hound Band showing up, I'll just show up. So. Glory Hound <laughs> Band's going online going, man, that double D, that Dang was it. a trick. Dang it. People are coming on here and they're complaining about how we're really bad at music and we have no board games. What is wrong with these with our fans? <laughs> I want people to show up at their concert and be like, we're side. We want side. We want side. That's what I want to see happen. Uh, if so, you find out where they're playing, I'm I'm comfortable doing right? it. Right? <laughs> Just to quack at them. There you go. <laughs> Aggressively. So if you're watching at home, make sure to head on over to Tabletopia if you want to see more of the in-action sports happening here for Super Fantasy Brawl. And make sure to follow everybody on all of the social Quack medias. Oak, Mythic, Glory Hound. That's right. So you get notified whenever everybody goes live and everything for that. Other than that, I believe we are going to be signing off for the day as soon as I get my mouse up here. On... Somewhere. We'll see all of you later. Thanks so much for joining <laughs> us. Bye. Bye.